Players at the ready. Are you ready? Are you ready? On my release. Tonight, I'll be eating roasted cauliflower tacos with spicy chipotle sauce. Thank you. Oh! I wasn't ready! You want cheese to go with that wine? Good afternoon, Air Hockey fans. We welcome you to watch this live game, Peter Kai versus Matt Bentley. And this is going to be an absolutely epic battle. We've got Ref Anthony coming in right now to ref the game. And uh, today, what's, what's so special about today is that we have the debut of the fabled Mallet X. What we're seeing right now is that this mallet that, that Peter Kai is holding right now is actually a... Uh, a machined mallet. We also welcome here with uh, Danny Hines, 11 time world champion air hockey professional. Danny, how's it going? It's going good, Nathan, man. Thanks for having me on. Uh, you know, it's, uh, I'm looking forward to this match as well. I think, uh, you know, both these players have a, a you know, I think a style that uh, kind of complements each other. Um, so it'd be very interesting to see, uh, you know, who ends up on top. Yeah. You know, I got to mess with that mallet yesterday, so it was a $350 mallet that that Spec took. So we, we call Peter Kai Spec. He took a uh, a block of Delrin and then gave that to a machinist. Oh, that was a fantastic right wall under. Yep. And the machinist actually uh, lathed it down. And so I got to use it yesterday. It is... Uh, it, I've got so many feelings about it, but I haven't been able to play with it long enough to decide for myself. But it's amazing on offense. It is less than amazing on defense, so it'll be interesting to see, so like right there, how we lost the puck right there and there again. That's going to be the downside of that mallet, that black one that Peter is using. Um, but as far as offense, it makes very crisp, very fast shots, just like that one there. Yeah, we, we've had mallets, you know, that seem to have a little more, you know, they're harder material, uh, a little more weighted. And you just get a lot of pop. Oh, it was a nice save there by Matt just now. Um, you get a lot of pop offensively, but a lot of times what ends up happening is, you know, you make a blocked shot uh, and that puck just bounces right back to your opponent. It, it, it kind of happened quite a bit. So, I mean, you know, it's hard to find that absolute perfect material that's going to give you that soft kind of cushion, you know, that's great for defense, but at the same time give you a lot of power offensively. Right. Ooh, fake out, right wall under, Matt blocks it. You know, this is a, um, oh, fantastic, right wall over. Um, we have a shot of the day that we're doing today, and the shot of the day, something new that we're trying in the AAHL is... Oh, that was a nice stuff wall under, sorry. Was, no, it was, no yeah. it was beautiful. Oh, no, Matt scores on himself an error there. Um, so if the players have a new rating system here, and uh, so we're trying something called the shot of the day. And basically, if the player does the shot of the day, which in this case is a cross, they get extra points. And so they're sort of incentivized to use this extra shot. So it should be kind of fun. Oh, right wall over. Yeah, so I mean, I, you know, I, oh, no. I, I like the idea of being creative. Oh, that's a, oof, another kind of tough. Unforced error on Matt. There. Yeah, for Matt, that's, that's down 6-3 that, for this opening game. But, uh, yeah, I'll touch on it later. Let's watch this this point here. It's a big point. Matt sets it up, goes for a fake out, loses possession. Spec loses possession yeah. due to that new mallet. Gets it back. Looks like Matt's went went for two rat wall overs, uh, both of them a little too too uh, too wide. Yeah. 
Ooh, left wall over. Speck right now poised to win the first game. This is going to be best two out of three games. Ooh, Matt blocks it at the line and takes possession. Fantastic shot. Yeah, gutsy charge there, uh, you know, to, to anticipate that straight shot. I, I think these guys know each other's game pretty well. They've played a lot. This is actually one of my absolute favorite games to watch because both of these guys were uh, doubles partners. Oh, no, and there it is. That is the, the uh, final shot there. A, a bit of a uh, forced error. I believe it was forced error. Yeah. Yeah. And scores yeah, on I mean, himself. It, you look at those. I mean, there was three unforced errors that game, and the score ended up being seven to four. So it just shows how evenly matched they are. Um you know, it'll be great to see, you know, take those errors away and, and see what the results are going to be. So um, I think that with the new mallet, you would think Spec actually would have a few more of those unforced errors than what Matt did. But, you know, it can also affect uh, your opponent as well. You know, when, when that puck is bouncing off that mallet a little more so than normal, uh, it can kind of surprise you and throw you off a little bit. So you know, we'll I, see if that continues to be the case. Yeah. I don't know if you saw it, but there was a point at which um, Speck was trying to stop the puck, and it actually bounced back and forth off of his off rail about four times before popping back over to Matt. And so that's going to be yeah. the, the ultimate difference. When I used the mallet yesterday, I found that my offense massively improved. It also changed my game style. But also mm. what it did, uh, which was unique, is that it... Um, May, you know, it made me have to play a much more offensive game instead of defensive. It almost became a chase game where every single shot that was done, um, I found that I was just, you know, instead of stopping it and aiming and shooting, it just became full chase, which I enjoy, to be honest. It sort of forced me to play the game style that I enjoy more. Sure, sure. Yeah, I, I'm more of a defensive kind of guy, so... Um, <laughs> probably won't be my favorite mount if that, if that ends up being the case. But like I said, let's... It's still early. It's way too early to judge it, you know. And, uh, you know, I, I think it's great that you guys, I was telling Spec before we started, um, it's, it's really good that you guys are, are, are trying something new, um, you know, because you just never know if this material, the, the current material that we've had for our mallets becomes more scarce or something along those lines. I mean, it, it'd be great to have something else that the sport can go to, right? For their, you know, for our equipment. And well, it's funny because, uh, you know, there's so many players that will say one mallet is better than the other. But when you actually um, bring up the conversation, got a right wall under off of Specs mallet there. When you uh, bring up the conversation to, to some players and you actually make them choose their favorite mallet, you'll notice they all pick different ones. And there's actually, I think, uh, I want to say seven or so in existence right now that all have different hardness levels. And uh, so everyone kind of prefers something different. So I think this would be fun for those that really like that. It's, to be honest, this is very similar to a low top, like the translucent low top is, is how it plays. Oh, yeah. there's that cut from spec. Yeah, a little Ooh, loss of mallet, no goal. And he loses possession. That's really unfortunate. Gains back possession, sets up for that right wall, but shoots at mid. Goes for the fake out, and Matt was wide open, but Spec misses. Yeah. Did it again. I was actually impressed that he was able to stop it with that mallet when all was behind his mallet. Yeah, you know, again, you know, you're going to adjust. The more you play with it, the more you're going to get used to it. Um, you know, so a lot of these little things that are affecting him early on, they may not affect him long run, you know? Right. So, so like I said, I mean, let, let's let's see what happens, and uh, you know, before we before we judge it completely on the, you know the mallet. But I mean, you're right. Uh, uh, nice left wall there by Spec. But uh, every every player um, will pick a different uh, mallet, and it kind of goes to what suits them as to what they're trying to do in their attack and their games. Ooh, you know, right wall under on the fake out. Yeah. That time he hit it. Sorry to interrupt. You keep going, though. Oh, no, 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 no. You're good. Um, another cut straight there by Spec. So he's kind of in control of this game so far. So far, this first set. 
um, yesterday after using that mallet for the first time. Oh, great line nice. scrimmage there. Um, I found that after switching back to a cream mallet, I had a lot more control. So one thing this does is it definitely forces you to use a much lighter hand. It also, um, it uses a lot less energy. When you're going to for a swing, it seems like it takes a lot less effort because of how, uh, well, I guess, heavy and, and uh, hard the material is. Beautiful cut by Matt there, bringing this score to four to five right now. Goes for the charge, gains possession back. Goes for the fake out, pump action. Goes for the cross, maintains possession. Yeah, that that time he rushed it uh, instead of setting it up. You know, he he was doing a really good job of setting it up left of center, and you know, forcing Spec to kind of commit one way or the other. And when he did, he was paying the price. Uh, but you know, he's got to stick to that, and you know, not kind of get impatient or feel like that puck's getting away from him. Up. Oh. There it is, the cut nice again. Score. Great, yeah. I don't think I've seen a cross yet, which is supposed to be the, the shot of the day. Oh, I think that one came well, off the table. So, <laughs> all right, so 6-4 uh, spec here. Game point. This could be spec second game one in a row. Matt goes for a cross. It's deflected. Some forehand by spec. For the cut. Oh, right wall over. Uh, yeah. Uh, over, you know, Matt was kind of out in limbo there. And I think, again, just wanting to kind of get that charge mentality a little bit. Um, again, you know, you, you get charged disease. That, that's not a good thing. Um, you know, you've got to control that. Uh, you know, a char charging a shot is not necessarily um, – you know the, the worst thing you can do it can actually work to your favor but it's got to be well timed and it's got to strategically be done if you just overuse it then it can be used against you right. the offensive player it's, um, it's... But, but going back to that the, the shot of the week kind of thing so my only concern with that I, I love the again thinking outside the box and and trying to just kind of develop new ideas and you know keep things fresh I just want it to, you know, for me, it's it's like the player's got to focus on, like, what's working, right? So both these guys are like juggernauts when it comes to blocking cross straights, right? And they're playing each other. And then you're playing, you happen to be playing somebody else that same week that is just, you know, uh, he, he's, he's, he's got an open door policy for cross straights. So every right. single cross you're going to hit is going to go in on that guy. So you, you kind of won the lottery that week when it comes to getting points versus the other two guys that are going to be hitting walls all day. That is very so, true. It's almost like we should have a yeah. schedule in the essence to show what shots are which. And so people could challenge each other based on those schedules. Yeah. I mean, you know, something like that, you know, could, could definitely, you know, would, would help that. Um, you know, like I said, but, but, you know, don't, don't, change things or anything like that based on what I'm saying. I'm just thinking, you know, from a from a strategic point of view, I mean, these guys just got to focus on, like, what is opening up? What can I open up on my opponent, right? So how can I open up the cross straight versus on somebody that is really, really good at blocking? Right. You know? You know, we're, we're uh, at this moment, we're still experimenting with so many things from mallet material to different camera angles to, um, yeah, shot of the day is a perfect example. Ooh, um, and it's fun because the, well, our, our uh, methodology here is if it doesn't work, we burn it, try something new. And so this is where we're at right now is sort of trying this out and seeing if we like it. We're trying a new ELO rating system, which is very unique. It's sort of a, a lot of the way that the other sports do it, but never before how air hockey's done it, where the ratings actually link to rankings, which is very unique. They do this in, uh, they do this in uh, chess, and I believe in ping pong as well and a few others. And so we're, we're trying things a little different to see what happens. Uh, All right, I think, uh, let's see here. looks like uh, Colin uh, made some comments here. He looks like he's on here. I gotta, it's so small. I gotta, I should have got my other set of glasses, but I have those at work too. So uh, it looks like he, he pretty much is saying kind of the same thing is, you know, certain players, if they get used to it, um, 
you know, regardless of the hardness, um, you know, uh, they can still make it work. And knowing him, uh, he probably could make anything work. He could probably have a diamond mallet and still <laughs> make true. it work. Or uh, what's what's uh, vibranium and antimania or ant whatever those those other uh, metals are from the comic books. I mean, uh, you know, because he's kind of a superhero in our sport. So Colin probably could use any metal there is and uh, and uh, make it work on the table. You know, it makes me wonder though. You know, there's a current rule right now that states that the mallet has to be made out of a uniform material all the way throughout. So the same plastic, if you will, throughout. But, you know, it's also can be interpreted only around the playing surface where the puck touches it. So I've seen mallets that have metal around the outside. But it makes me wonder if we could make a mallet or change the rule system at one point to have it to where the mallet is maybe half hard and the other half soft. Looks like Speck let go of the mallet there. Matt gets possession. That way you could sort of rotate it during the game and have one side that's for defense and one side that's for offense. Yeah, I mean, look, it, it's... Um, Ooh, I, Spec gets nice. him with a cut. Yeah, so I don't know if, if it was about the the hardness, you know, for the material, I guess, the reason they made made that a, a rule. Because uh, that one, that rule was made well before I got into the sport. But it, my guess, it would probably have something to do with the... The, the color or you know something along those lines they don't want to have like multiple colors or something that could possibly uh distract a player or, or an opponent or something along those lines beautiful right wall over by matt oh followed up by a forehand left wall over by spec uh colin in the chat right now current world champion and he posts you know it's also important that the mallet doesn't drag when you put pressure on it, I can yes. attest to Mallet X, as we're calling the Black Mallet. I call it X Caliber, but they got mad at me for that. Um, mallet X, um, it does have basic, I don't want to say zero drag, but it does feel like a very well broken in mallet, and it's only been like day one in use um, because of how hard it is. So it actually has very little drag, which is what I like about it. Um, I also love how uh, balanced it is. It doesn't have any like heavy spots because it was machined, so it was, you know, spun, laved. We got Matt going for the left wall. He's rushing it, loses possession. Spec gains possession, immediately loses it. Matt with the right wall under, taking the score four to four. This could be Matt's first win in this set. Yeah, and he needs it. Uh, you know, I, I, you know, Matt's currently number three, correct, in Idaho, and Pete's uh, number four. So it's you know, true. I think Matt needs the. I'm sorry. No, I said it's true. Uh, right the second. Oh no, no, Matt scores on himself there, mm -hmm. the unforced error or a forced error. Um. Technically, by the ratings, Matt is number three and Spec is number four. However, all the last games they've played, Spec has won, and so at this, so this is going to be really hard. It's an uphill battle for Matt, in my opinion, just because Spec has Matt's playstyle pretty figured out. However, um, Matt has what we call fighting spirit, and Spec is trying out a brand new mallet. So with those two things combined, I think this will be a very close game. Okay. Oh, nice right wall over. Beautiful. One of the things about Matt is he's so good at his overs. Oh, it is now six oh, well to six. Right wall under. Yeah. So he, you know, Spec delayed that just just enough there. It kind of froze Matt just a, a here there to, to get past his defense. So this is a huge point. And I'd say, you know, Spec is probably feeling pretty calm. Um, he's in a good place, even though he's on defense. Um, you know, Matt, I think, is going to be feeling the pressure a little bit here on this possession. He's got to really make a good shot. And, um, you know, he, being down three to zero is a big difference than being down two to one. If I know Matt like I do, he's going to go for the right wall over right here. Nope. Oh, oh that's goodness. the final shot of forced air. Oh. Matt has spent hours and hours working on his overs. And uh, it, it eats some players alive because most players will always block. They will they will sacrifice everything else to block the right wall under. So Matt is very good about doing his overs. Oop, I hit the wrong button. Yeah, well, <clears throat> it, it, that was a, a definitely a, a must win, I think, uh, to stay in this set. Um, you know, so like I said, being down two games to one versus uh, three games to zero is, is a huge deal. Um, so, like I said, it you know definitely adds some excitement to this first set, and uh, 
By the way, is this a best of uh, seven or best of five match? No, this is a two out of three. Oh, two out of three match. Oh, yeah. Wow. Okay. So it's a two out of three. Okay. We're doing two out of three sets. We're finding that it's one of the best ways to get, um, you know, a, a very fantastic match watched enough to show who's, you know, a little bit more dominant, but at the same time, not crushing in past that two and a half hour mark that we're finding that a lot of people like to watch a, a, a good show, a good, you know, game. Yeah. And so that's um, what we're what we're trying for right now. Um, okay. You can see in these replays, these guys, some of these shots are doing are just so insanely fast. Um, and uh, one of the things that Matt's really good at, actually, is his off speeds. And so I remember when I first started playing air hockey, I was told what an off speed was. I, I always thought it was a slow shot. And I always did it incorrectly because I would hit it really slow and the other person would gain possession. And, and it took someone saying, hey, it's, it means instead of shooting your shot at a 100% speed, maybe take it to 95. Because they're going to overcorrect just that, you know, one split second. And they're going to correct, they're going to be where it should be if you were to hit it at full speed. But it's going to be going a tiny bit slow and go right behind their mallet. And that's something I yeah, find okay. that Matt is also really, really, really good at. Yeah, I mean, the key to off-speed shots um it's no different than a uh, change up in baseball um you know obviously a pitcher would love just to throw change ups all day long because it's a whole lot less wear and tear on the arm but you know it, it's uh at times and if it's hit just right it can actually put just as much wear and tear and the reason being is you want it to look like you're gonna hit uh with that same hard fast release um, but but you actually take off uh, a certain amount on, on the on the shot itself. So um, you know, but it looks the same. I mean, everything looks the same. So instead of coming up and hitting a blistering you know cross straight, you go up there and and go and just tap it. Uh, but but the, the release is still a quick jerking you know motion that's going to make somebody again pull for that cross straight, and it ends up just being a medium speed or slow speed. Power straight. Block by spec. That goes for that right wall over, then the under and scores. Ooh. Matt looks down to see where he was to block that cut. Yeah. That's something you see often in air hockey is that when someone is scored on, just like right there, they go to look and see where they were on their defense and where they need to adjust. Yeah. Yeah, so there, he kind of, he came out, but he came out pretty much after the shot. He actually pulled back just the hair and then he went out. And sometimes when a defensive player does that, they feel like, well, man, went out. How did the, how did the angle of that straight shot go in? Right. And it's, it's because you pulled back just the hair. And then when you actually came out, you know, you didn't, you weren't actually coming out perfectly straight. You kind of came out, you know, just a little bit, like in that case, a little bit to his left. Another beautiful charge by Matt, stealing possession from Spec, reading him like a book. Spec steals possession, goes for a forehand. I've uh, played with Matt the longest out of all the players here, and uh, mm -hmm. his play style is very unique, in my opinion, because he plays so far back on the table. A lot of players reach yeah. a lot further forward, so like right here he's playing towards the line a little bit more, but you'll notice a lot of his shots he does from about the, what would you say, the 20 or 30 yard line, right? Whereas Spec is hitting yeah. them from about middle of the table, and so it requires me to usually defend when I, I have to have a, a stance where I'm leaning further away from the table, if you will, rather than over it. Ooh. Yeah, and, and doing that, you actually, you know, from hitting further back, it does change the angle of the shot. So there are some benefits to doing that. Um, nice little left wall under. Um, you know, but the, to make a living like that is going to be kind of tough, you know, especially at the highest levels. Um, another unforced error by Matt. He's really got to get control of that. That's that's been the, the huge detriment to his game so far um but yeah so uh you know 
for me, it's all again about, across. you know putting as much pressure, yeah, on the on your defend on the defender, your opponent as possible. And in order to do that, I mean, you got to give them very very little time to react to a shot. Right. And if if you give them more time, eventually they kind of catch on, you know, to the little Ooh, nuances. Awesome, oh my goodness. Yeah, another yeah. unforced error. Matt was having uh, um, issues at the arcade a few weeks ago. He was having some uh, like finger issues where he was losing feeling in his fingers, and uh, he let go of the mallet quite a few times, and he was he was getting pretty frustrated. Mm. Beautiful cross or a uh, cut by Spec there, bringing the game to a game point four to six. Spec almost scores on himself, sets it up. Goes for straight down the center. Oh, it is immediately deflected, and Matt scores the goal instead. 5-6 now. Oh, no! Oh, no! Mm. Uh, yeah, that, that uh, kind of a unfortunate little ending there for, for Matt. Um, now he finds himself down three games to one. Um Mm, that's 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 making the it's, it's gonna be a tough road for him he's got to find some offense he's got to find a consistent attack uh you know and, and really kind of put spec on his heels a little bit um i don't think he's really uh, found that just yet i think uh, spec is just comfortable uh defending him how he's been defending him i think he's he feels he can outscore him uh, you know enough where he's not going to, you know, be forced to again just kind of sell out for one particular shot or another, um, you know. So I mean, Spec just got to continue doing what he's doing. Uh, but Matt has definitely got to make some adjustments here. Uh, number one, he's got to take away the errors, uh, and number two, I, I really think he's got to try to hit a little closer to that line. Um, and if it's something that again Spec is used to seeing, I could definitely work towards his advantage, right? To his advantage. Because now you're bringing the puck up closer to that line. Specs probably not used to defending that uh, against Matt, at least. Right. So um, could definitely change the the whole, you know, outlook of the match. But uh, you know, so far, like I said, you know, hats off to Spec. He's uh, he's playing well. He's he's doing what he needs to do to uh, control this first set. I'm I'm excited to see this next few games here because Matt sometimes he will barrel down and just turn into a whole new beast and other times he'll lose some energy so it's exciting to see what version of Matt we're gonna be seeing in the next few minutes here um, let's yeah. dive back in and... yeah so so again a shortened format you know best of three he, he doesn't have much time to, to get tired especially right now it every one of these games is super important for Matt um, he really should do everything he can to push it and, and not give up this first set right yeah <laughs> I don't know if you could hear that or not, but he said, great, my friend is here. He's talking about Steven in the chat right now. He said, oh, great, my friend is here telling everyone I'm old. Steven, oh. <laughs> Steven thanks for joining us on here. All right. We, um, you know, Spec had posted that first video of the mallet being made. Now it was over six ounces. And then since then they shaved off a lot of more of the middle and they, he got it within regulation weight. But a lot of people didn't see that second post. And so everybody was sitting there saying, you know, hey, he, he can't really use that mallet. No, it's actually, it's under six ounces at 5.79, I believe, with the tape on it. Yeah, very nice. Nice little get there. Ooh, loses possession and immediately scored on with a right wall over. That is definitely the, the right and left wall over is definitely Matt's bread and butter shot. Believe it or not, he does that more often than his right wall unders, his cuts, crosses, anything else. His overs are his number one shot now. Ooh, beautiful yeah, get. He, he caught Spec where Spec was not ready at all. He, you know, he, that puck kind of got away from him. Um, you know, and he literally was just about to start getting set defensively. Um, and that's what Matt kind of needs to do more so. And there you go, another right There's wall There's another over. right wall under, yeah. And, um, and I will say that when at, when I'm playing spec, anytime I score a goal on him, he doesn't care unless it's an over. If I score an over on him, he immediately will say it out loud. He'll say, 
overs and because you know gets angry because that's the shot that gets him the most it's you know uh it's because he plays at the arcade he walks around with a sign so this is spec i'm talking about another right wall over he'll walk around with a sign that says if you can beat me you can get a hundred dollars right beautiful right wall under by spec there and uh but the new players will find that they will um they usually will get a point against spec by doing an over, right? A new player can accidentally hit a beautiful over, and he'll even say it out loud and go, ah, oh, over, right? Um, and so it's the one shot that spec knows is his biggest weakness to where he'll say it out loud, and you know what irritates him, so it's like you almost are encouraged to do it more. Uh, one thing I always tell my players here is that, you know, you don't ever want to show somebody what makes you angry because they're going to do it more and more, right? And, and so don't, don't give them your weakness. Yeah, so... Puck needs to know, be sanded, it looks like. Yep, it slows down on the table yeah. there. So, you know, I think in that kind of setting, I mean, um, and, and really a right wall over. So the difficulty, I think, for most players uh, to hit a really good crisp right wall over, um, if, if there's a shot that you struggle to block, that might be the one. So nothing to, to hang your head out, you know, hang, hang your head about. Uh, concerning that that's that's uh that affects a lot of players um it's just a hard shot to block that's hit right right spec gets position he is oh beautiful cut yep. crisp matt's taking a second to think about this taking advantage of his 10 seconds to put it back on the table sets it up goes to the fake out goes to the right wall double shot goes for the left wall over Again with the left wall, loses possession. Oh no. Speck lost possession as well. Hit it way too lightly. He hit his own goal. You can see he's a little upset about that one. Right wall oh. under. I think it's one of the benefits of having that harder plastic is just that release is very fast. There it is again. Making this now yeah. set point to four. If Spec gets one more point, he wins the first set. And this is only two out of three sets. All right. Matt's making a, a game out of this here. Six five. Ooh, Spec gets possession back. And there it is. Goes with the yeah. cut shot. All right, first set goes to Spec. He's now up 1-0 since set, so one more set, uh, he will win this match. Um, you know, Matt, Matt's got his work, work cut out for him, uh, losing that first set four games to one. And you can see that, uh, you can see on Matt's face with that caught getting through on him again, you can see that that's the one that's been getting him upset. And so as soon as that happened, he just walks away. Uh, we're going to be bringing in both these guys in here, but before we do that, I, I should really do a shout out to Ruth Kamichek with her real estate. Uh, Ruth Kamichek, her phone number is 208-965-3570. And uh, just a, a, a quick shout out to Ruth because first off, um, she's just the best. Uh, she lived in our town for a very long time and then later moved to Idaho. Our town burned down in a huge fire. Um, they later made a Netflix documentary about it. I don't know if you've ever seen it, Danny. If you want a, a tearjerker, I've got something for you to watch. But either way, she um she was there for us when we wanted to move, and she set us up with. I think we saw in the in the matter of two days, we saw over 20 houses in two days that she had set up, I believe. And um mm. and uh, was just the absolute best best real estate agent ever. Um, and so Ruth Kamichek, we just want to give a, a massive shout out to her for being a sponsor of us, but not just being a sponsor of Air Hockey, also being a great friend and uh, amazingly compassionate person. Um, we can see the scores right now. We've got, in this first set, we're only gonna be doing three sets today. Best two out of three. And uh, we're seeing the scores right here. So pretty pretty close scores. There's never been a 7-0, a 7-1, 7-2, or 7-3. Matt's gotten at the, at the lowest, four points. Spec on the lowest points has gotten six. So we can see that this is still a pretty close game. Yeah, no doubts. Um... You know, so I guess right now for Spec, he's probably thinking that Mallet is definitely providing the offense because uh, the lowest he scored is six points in a game. That's uh, 
that's pretty impressive. If you can do that against uh, everybody, then hey. you're, you're uh, doing okay. Can you repeat that? I wasn't hearing you. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we got spec in the house right now. And so we got Danny Hines, 11 time world champion. Danny, what advice do you have for spec in this game? Yeah, so look, Spec, I mean, I thought, I mean, you, you did exactly what you needed to do there to keep Matt off balance, you know, just enough. Um, you know, he, he's um, he's not really matching, you know, your your offense, uh, you know, by raising the level of his defense, right? So you, you just really need to continue to do what you are doing in order to, you know, just close this match out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, that, that being said, right, um, you know, obviously there are things you can improve on. I mean, you're still sometimes, you know, you're hitting these shots, um, you know, and the deception isn't there. It's rushed a little bit mm -hmm, yeah. versus when you are hitting the, uh, you know, with a little bit of a delayed release, your efficiency level is off the charts. So like if you hold that release on that right wall bank, it goes in just about every time. Yeah, versus, I, I noticed that. It's, yeah. I, it's a new yeah. technique I had with that mallet. It's called the um, limp arm. <laughs> I just have my uh -huh. arm limp and I just flick my wrist and it usually just goes in. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so, so you know, so just, you know, think about that. Um, you know, don't go away from, uh, you know, your attack for the most part. You know, force him to do something to block it, right? Uh, you know, the other thing too, I mean, you want to throw in a little bit, maybe more variety. I don't, I just still don't think we've seen a cross straight this entire match. Uh, well, he's, he's been, uh, he's doing a good job blocking mine. So, okay, well, so, so to give you a little history, like, uh, you know, when I was number one in the world and, and Ehab Shukri was number two, and it seemed like every year we were playing each other in the finals, Ehab was this beast defensively, and it was almost impossible to score across. It was almost impossible to score him at all. But I mean, a cross straight on him was like winning the lotto. And I would every set. That was my goal. It wasn't, you know, to to hit the right wall over, which that was the shot I knew I could hit on him. Um, you know, it wasn't hitting a, a good hard cut. It was opening up the cross. Mm -hmm. If I could open up the cross, I knew I'd be able to. I I would be able to beat him that match. As hard as that was, even if I got just one in an entire set, I felt like it was an accomplishment. And um, so that that's that's kind of the mindset uh, that I think you need to, to have. And it's it's you know what? Yes, this person is amazing at blocking this particular shot, but I'm gonna figure out a way to open it up, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe I change my release. Maybe I change uh, the speed of the shot. Maybe I change. Um, you know the, the position of where I'm hitting it from, right? So all those all those little different things to to try to open it up. But I mean, you don't want to get go into a match and say, "Man, this guy is so amazing at blocking this," and just not even going to try it, right? So um, that's just good advice for anybody out there. You know, you want to play your game and, and play your attack, um, and you want to force it upon your opponent. Okay. So, um, How do you think yeah, this overall, next game's gonna go, Spec? Do you think well, he... I want to know what his opinions on on our new mallet. Oh, so you know, so far, yeah, it reminds me a lot of like you know, little low tops, you know, that we have little <laughs> yeah. hard low tops. I started playing when I first started playing, you know, back in I guess the fall of '94 and, and my first Worlds in '95. Uh, I used a low top, a hard low top, and man. I, <laughs> I, I would knock the living tar out of that puck. And it, if, if it didn't go in the goal, it was probably hitting somebody really hard uh, down the, the, the hallway or down the mall pathway. Oh, yeah. it, was, it, was, it, was going, it was flying that hard. Um, all that being said, I mean, you know, there's definitely some advantages to, to being able to hit like that. Um, but really, the most important thing is like, you know, how do you feel about it, right? So. Is it something that, because, you know, you can see, and it's still early to for you to, you know, be using this mallet. So you're not going to be 100%, you know, re you know, used to it or anything along those lines. But, but if it's something that you feel like you're very comfortable with and you feel like it's something that you want to keep pursuing, then heck yeah, man, go for it. And, and I think it's great. Yeah, when I first got it, it felt really natural because I've been always been playing with a heavy mallet since uh, I started. So I, I actually mm -hmm. put nickels in my green one <laughs> just to put some weight on it and get that extra 
extra strong shots. And this one just came very natural to me. And all the defensive capabilities of it is, is whatever. And I mean, I still don't really keep the puck that much because I'm not, still not that experienced with it. But yeah, I think I'll grow into it and I'll, I'll grow into like it even more. Yeah. Brass knuckles yeah, I mean, of felony. Uh, yeah, brass knuckles. I call it the brass knuckles because I painted it kind of gold. <laughs> yeah, right. like I, mean, I said, man, it, it look, it, it ultimately, it, it's, you know, if you feel comfortable with that mallet, you feel like you can do what you need to do, you know, all, both offensively and defensively, you know, for your game, uh, then have at it, you know. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of an old traditionalist, you know, I like a softer mallet just because, you know, I think when somebody hits that shot, a blistering shot at you, especially straight shots, you know, like if somebody hits a straight, 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 and you have these little hard mallets, if they hit it so hard into your mallet, 80% of the time it goes right back to your opponent, you know, so it builds up their possession time. And instead of, see, Matt's shaking his head. He's like, oh, that's actually good advice for this uh, <laughs> this match here. But, but it, you know, it, it builds up that possession time for your opponent. So I, I don't, obviously, I don't want that, right? I want to, to block that shot one time, get the puck, and start my attack, right? So, again, but it's, it's really all in, like, what you envision is your game. Because it ultimately, you know, this is, this is your world. This is your battle you know, on that table. And uh, it, it really is, is up to you guys, you know, and how y'all want to handle that. Got any advice for Matt? <laughs> yes, I do. I do. So, so Matt, how you doing? Pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, number one, uh, you know, the, especially the first couple games, and it kind of came back a little bit, uh, I think, in game, um, in game uh, four, a couple, un you know, some unforced errors that were very untimely against you, um, where you had some self scores and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, that that was huge. I mean, in the first game itself, I think I counted three, and the game was seven to four, right? And and a lot of that is again your. your just starting a match you've got the adrenaline pumping um a little bit of jitters and whatnot so um you know you, you gotta kind of play through that and i think you did um you know but i think i think for you i think you gotta change things up a little bit offensively um you know a lot of your shots are from the middle of the table yeah. i think again further to the left of the quad you know left of the table left of center or even right of center and hit your shots a little closer to the line. I think right now spec is way too comfortable defensively and he feels like, okay, I'm going to slow him down and stop him just enough and I'm going to outscore him. Right. Which that's all he has to do. So I think if, again, you are a little more like aggressive and more, uh, uh, I guess on point when it comes to, I'm going to do this, right to center drift, but I'm going to be left of center when I actually hit the puck, and I'm going to force there to be a straight line, a straight path to the goal, right? So even if I need to go further over, if he adjusts just the hair and you come over even more to your left and you, you wind up for that shot, you know, then he may over adjust and there goes the cross straight. The, that opens up the cross straight. So I, I think that's huge for you to do, but right now it feels like you don't have something that's just consistent. You know, that's true. Uh, your right wall over, you know, when you're hitting it and you're hitting it right, it's great. It's wonderful. But you got to mix that up with, with other shots, you know. Um, and, and the straights are, is where it's at, you know, because, it, it, you know, straight shots really require the, the least amount of effort uh, compared to, you know, banks and whatnot. Um, and, and again, you know, help your offense by, by positioning that puck in the right location on the table to give you the, the best shot of success. And the other thing too, like I said earlier that you heard, you know, hitting more straight shots is gonna hit off of his mount and bounce right back to you a lot of times if you hit it hard enough. So so this is a good test for, for him and that mallet to see if he can actually consume some of that impact and keep it on his side of the goal. And at the same time, maybe give you more uh, possession time, right? So that you build up that possession time 
you're going to build up that uh, stress level on, on the specs end of the, the spectrum. And, uh, you know, again, you build up somebody's stress level, all of a sudden their shots aren't quite as accurate, quite as sharp as they once were, right? I mean, so look how stressed out he is already. <laughs> <laughs> I know, he's, he's too relaxed over there. So, so you got to uh, force that on him, all right? But uh, look, man, the, I mean, it, it's, it's the first set. It's best of three, so, you know, just shake it off, go out there, and just leave it on the table, man, because, uh, you know, it, it, I can't stress that enough. You know, you can, we can sit here and harp on the, you know, the fact that you lost these, you know, four out of five games here, or we can just focus on the very next one and the very next point, right? Oh, yeah. I didn't so, even remember uh, I lost. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks exactly. for reminding. But All yeah, right. so, I mean, like I said, I, I wouldn't overthink it, but, but, just make a conscious effort, right? More straights, you know, more attacks from where it's not from the middle, uh, closer to the line. Uh, you know, you've had some really good uh, time, well-timed charges that have given you possession. Um, now, uh, be, just be careful you don't overdo that, right? Yeah, he caught me a couple times. Yeah, right. That, and and that's that's what I, exactly what I'm referring to. Um, you know, just. Trust your defense, man. Trust trust that you you know what to do defensively and, and you can still block it. Trust in my D. Got it. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Does that, does that help? It, it does. And the ones I scored on myself is when I shoot from someplace I'm unfamiliar with. Yeah. And I am not expecting that return. Yeah. So I... But it's... I mean that's the that's the risk you take. That and and when you see me coming up to the line and shooting from the line, it's I have you in my inside my head telling me to do that. <laughs> Go to the line. Well, don't shoot from the center of the yeah or, yeah of the, no of the lane. Don't shoot from the center lane. Go for, to one of the sides. Yes, yes. So so again, you know, think about it. Like make a conscious, um, you know, effort to say, you know, what the second I hit this this puck, I got to be ready for anything. I got to be ready for him to, you know, interfere with it. I got to be ready for it to have this weird bounce out of his goal and doing all these double banks coming towards, you know, my side of the table. Yeah. So you just got to be ready for anything. And, and that'll help, you know, help you catch those pucks and maintain those possessions. All right. Specs um, trying to hurry me up, so I better get going. No problem. Good luck, Matt. Come on. You all can right. do it. I will do it. All right. Nathan's getting back on. <laughs> All right. So, so Nathan, I, I love what Matt was doing at the at the end there. He said, "I will do it," and he seemed very determined, and he was ready to get you know he's ready to get on that table and uh, make it happen now. So, I love that. I like both of their determinations. I think Matt is one of my my favorites because he's been around since the very start of when I started playing him and I started playing together, and uh, mm -hmm. he's very mentally driven, right? Yep. Yeah, definitely. I like I said, it, it's uh, you, you gotta love. I mean, what's not to love, right? When you uh, you know, you get back on that horse if you fall down, right? Right. So that's exactly what Matt's doing. So let, let's hopefully, hopefully, it can translate into uh, you know a good strong showing for him, and uh, you know we can he can push this to a third and a final set. You know where uh, his spec was over there showing off his mallet a second ago. Um, I feel that Matt has such a fun and fundamental, actually, I would say fun and fundamental gameplay where he, you know, plays from really far back and he's working on playing at the front. When I was out there, I was talking about his game for a second before he came in here and he said, you know, he's like, I, I, I said, you did so good on the overs. And he goes, yeah, but not the ones I was supposed to do. I said, what do you mean by that? And he goes, Danny's going to be mad at me, um, you know, because I was supposed to do him a lot further up and I just can't do those yet. Here comes the yeah, face off so here. Yeah. Ooh. Right, there we go. Matt scores the first goal. Very nice. It's a good start for Matt. Yeah, so so oops, almost caught that one. Um so the whole, you know, yeah, I can't quite do this shot yet. You know, that mentality, that thought process. Right. Man, it, it, it's so tough. Um, you know, air, air hockey's a lot like 
you know, baseball when it comes just to the mental part of this game. You know, we have such a small time to react, to do anything. And then offensively, it's like if you lose a little bit of, of confidence in a specific shot, uh, it, it's it's so easy for, uh, you know, for, for you to just really make a lot of errors. Actually. It's true. So, oh. Yeah, so. Yeah, so he he's just Matt's just got to let it go, man. He's just got to you know free will it. He's got to just believe that you know he he can do it and just just let it yeah. go. I found that challenge matches are the best teacher. And what I mean by that is, um, if I find that I can't get any other shot through, but maybe a let's just say a left wall under, or a left wall over. Let's we'll say left wall over, which is one of my harder shots to do. Then I find that in a challenge match, it's a beautiful shot by Spec there. I find that. I have to do it over and over and over again, you know, There's when I do that same shot. Right that was a great, ooh, is it saved? No, it looks like it's out. Uh, yep, goes to Matt. Yeah, it hit uh, Spec's hand. That was good for Spec to give it up there. Yep. Um, And so I find that it's the ultimate teacher because you, you know, if you're only able to do it one way, it's almost like not being allowed to eat unless you eat with chopsticks, right? You're gonna, you're gonna learn way faster than on your own accord. And so when you have that sure. pressure of another player and you, and you find the only shot you can get through is, let's just say, one or one that you've opened up. Um, it instantly teaches you. So this might be a, a amazing teaching moment to have Matt learn these right wall overs from up higher. It sounds like what? Oh, right wall under blistering speed. So so I'll point out one thing uh, You know that, that, that Matt seems to be doing so far uh, this game. And it's 3-3, three, three, still very early. Um, you know, but, but he's been hitting more straights and harder and, uh, which, which is a good thing. And, uh, it's, it's, it's you know, for him, he, he didn't do enough of them in the first set. Um, and when I say that specs playing with a very hard mallet, right? So use that to your advantage when you're on, you know, when you're, when you're on offense against him and you do that by hitting a lot of straight shots Agreed. with some velocity, right? Agreed. So that puck's going to bounce back to your Ooh, side. Just like that right there. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so, so far, so good. Um, that's two cross straights this game. So that, that's very nice. I, I don't think I actually told Matt to hit any cross straights. I also told him to hit straights, more straights. So that's good that he's... Uh, He's got two yeah. of them so far. When Matt first started, we actually called him Sniper because his shot was so fast and so hard and, and just almost, not right down the center, but like a perfect cut. But it would be so hard, it would move the mallet out of the way. One time, he actually shot it off the table and it hit a lady at the arcade in, in, the, in the cheekbone and it left her a bruise. Yeah. Oh, that's another one right there, another beautiful cut. Yeah, nice cut straight, good velocity. And it left her a bruise that lasted for hours. She was there for hours, and it had this big bruise on the side of her face because he hits it that hard. But somewhere down the yeah. line, people started telling him to hit it a little bit lighter because he was hitting it off the table so much. And it's, um, instead of pulling back maybe by 5%, he pulled back by, like, I don't know, 20% and started hitting it softer and started doing more yeah. banks instead of straights. But this game right here, he's now at game point to three for the first game in the second set. And uh, yeah. Spec hasn't gotten less than six points in any game. Nope. That was a nice little forehand. It was nice. By Spec. This could be it right here. Matt sets up. Right down the middle. Spec takes possession. Goes another forehand. Oh. Left wall under. Left under. Matt takes his time. He calls a timeout. I think that was a good mm -hmm. timeout. Yeah, so, you know, Matt may have found a little bit of a formula, you know, that uh, uh, has given him this lead. I mean, Speck has definitely fought his way back, um, but but he was up 6-3, to three and now it's 6-5, but uh, Matt does have the puck. We'll see if he keeps attacking, you know, with the straight, or he hits that occasional bank. He went for the cut he again, loses straight. possession. Yeah, couldn't hold on to it, though. There he goes, That's, gets it back. Yeah. Sets it up, goes for the cut. Oh no, uh -oh. forced error, bringing it game point, game point. Matt goes for the right wall oh. under, loses possession. And the right wall oh, under by Spec to take the game. That was yeah, a 6-3 deficit. 
What was it? Yeah, I think it was 6 3. 6 to 3, I believe. Yeah. So, yeah, big comeback for Spec, you know, in game one of the second set. Um, that's got to be a big confidence booster for him after, uh, you know, it seemed like Matt was maybe finding a formula. <laughs> you know, but I, I'd say that, you know, Matt is, uh, you know, when he pulled that last point, you know, and he hit kind of a really kind of a medium right while under attempt there at the end. Uh, it went away from what was really working, um, the, the, you know, that first game. Right. You know, he, got, he got off to that big lead by hitting straight, straight, straight. So, I mean, he had like two or three cross straights. He hits a cut straight. Um, you know, it, again, don't overthink things. You know, keep doing what's, what works. And um, I feel like I feel like Spec changed it up a lot with his forehands. He wasn't doing those as much. And so he started coming out with his forehands, and that threw Matt off. Yeah. Um, I've heard yeah, it said it. I've heard it said a lot of times that um, the player that adjusts the least will lose, right? It's a, it's a game of adjustments, and now Spec's adjusting, and Matt's not adjusting to his adjustment, and who's going to adjust more, in a sense, to the other player's game style? Um, yeah, I mean, yes and no. Um, it all depends, obviously, on, on the match, right? So if, if you adjust and you don't need to adjust, you can actually hurt yourself. So you know, there, there are yeah. situations like that. And that was a good example of that right there where Matt overthought it. And so he went, you know, thinking that, you know, maybe Spec's going to charge. I'm not sure what, it, you know, his, his mindset was, um, you know, on that last shot there. But, but man, you just got to let it go. And, and even if he charges, just be ready for that, for that rebound, you know, be ready for the charge and actually block the charge. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, I can't tell you how important that is. One thing um, I will say about Matt and, uh, is that he has a very hard time closing out a game. When he gets to six points, he starts shooting it really fast. He just wants to end it very quickly. And so he, he by his own omission, says that you know he has a very hard time closing out uh, a game when he's at six points. He makes a lot of rash decisions. Oh, beautiful uh, possession on that one. Yeah, nice face-off. Very nice face-off. Matt's done a really good job with the face-off so far this night. I've, I've seen a few French Ooh. Opens. Oh. That was beautiful. Spec loses control of it because of that mallet, and then, and then takes that shot and gets that cross on him. Yeah. Yeah. Matt, Matt's got to be prepared quicker. You know, he's got to be right. set defensively quicker. That was something but, else I've yeah, noticed that a lot of the players yeah, yeah. do here is that if we lose possession, and they generally for I would say half a second have a moment where they're upset about it, and you can see it in their face. They're not defensively in possession. Uh, position to defend the next shot because they just lose possession spec used to be like that a lot He would adjust his glasses. So right there where he just lost possession He would normally adjust his glasses right and kind of ease yeah. up for a split second And that was an opportunity for a shot and these guys this game. I'm not seeing a whole lot of that I see that when they lose possession. They're instantly ready for that rebound Yeah, you, you have to be you have to be um, Let's see yeah, cuz I know uh, was it it was uh, last week where um Sam took advantage of Scott quite a bit uh, for not being set right. uh, defensively in that uh, match. All right, two two to one now. Beck. Was, uh, I'm assuming at that moment it was when Scott was switching between, oh, 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 oh that cut shot is so good. Was that when uh, Scott would be switching between his left hand and right hand, you're thinking? Uh, yeah, a little bit, of, well, a little bit of that, but also, um, you know, just, just in transition. I mean, you know, uh, Sam would, would, you know, block a shot or, or you know, be setting it up or, or like appear to be setting up and just hit a quick, you know, bank, the right wall bank on him. And that seemed to work quite a bit on Scott there. Unforced error causing Speck to score on himself, loses possession, and then Matt scores another goal, bringing the game two to four now. Right down the center, Matt unwavering. Double that. Again, three times straight down the Ooh. center. Matt gains possession this time. Oh. Yeah, well, lost mallet. Yeah, just let go of it. Yeah, so so one thing Spec has got to realize and, and you know, be cautious of, and that, that was better there. He hit it from left of center. But just because you have that mallet that is, can hit it, you know, really fast, just like that, that doesn't necessarily mean – Start, it doesn't matter where you're hitting it from. Right. The, the positioning of the puck is so important, you know, based, you know, off of the drift. Oh, 
one of the things that ooh, unforced error again on Matt or on spec. Yep. One thing that I'm was another lead. Yeah, three to five. One thing Matt tells himself every game now is set it up, set up. If he doesn't set up, he'll yell at himself. Set it up, Matt, is what he'll tell himself because he That's loves to good. just hit it. You know, we all love that that fast gameplay. Matt now is. at it's game point. point. Let's see if he can finish it this time. Or Spec will make another miraculous. Oh no! Oh, my goodness. Well, there's your answer. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, so Again, you know, right? That, that probably had a little more pop off of the, you know, off the mouth than Beck was used to or was expecting, and uh, looks like it caused maybe an unforced error that uh, didn't work in his favor that time. Um, so again, you live and you die sometimes with with you know these mallets, uh, but uh, you know now it's one game apiece, and uh, I think a game like that where it wasn't seven to six, where Matt doesn't feel like he just barely got by. Uh, you know, could be a big confidence boost for Matt. Right. So we'll see. We'll see how this goes. But, uh, you know, so far, uh, a much better uh, set than, than what we saw the last set. Uh, a lot more competitive. And, again, uh, Matt just pounding straight, 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 again, with an occasional bank. And if that's the formula that he, that he can kind of get down, uh, the spec's going to have to kind of change things up and kind of, you know, realize uh, I can't just put it in the middle of the table and just hit whatever straight I want to and kind of rely on the speed of this of this mallet, right? Right. And so, uh, just as a reminder, yeah. that game was 7-3 at the last point there, um, you know, was showing 7-6, but that was a game prior. 7-3. Um, and that right there was the game changer because up until that game every game that spec had lost which has only been one he had six points all besides that it was seven points even the last game was seven to six but this game um you can say that matt that style that you're showing him is working hey man yeah uh what, what was the score again i think it was three seven no, yeah, no, we, we got it fixed on this end. Thanks, man. Alrighty. We've got right, Steven so. in the chat saying, kick some buttocks to Matt there. And saying that Spec has a hacks mallet. I love that quote. It's really funny. He's got hacks. He's, uh, hacks. he's cheating, in a sense. Yeah, yeah. Well... I had an old football coach. He'd say, if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it was a little different world back then. You know, Spec has has messed around with mallets a lot. He would take quarters and stick them in the inside of it and then put a plug at the bottom of it so that it would be at weight, but also that it would kind of absorb a lot of the impact. And, and mm -hmm. it would also put a lot of center of gravity in the middle of it, which is kind of fun. Matt yep, takes first possession. Yeah. Yeah, Matt's uh, Matt's putting on a clinic on uh, the faceoffs uh, this match. You know, he I mean I'm impressed because he used to until until about 3 or 4 weeks ago, he used to always be across the line. He would actually have his mallet almost all the way across the line. There it is. There's a cross. Oh, great. Um and he would be across the line, but we didn't realize that. There's actually a rule against that. You can't be touching the line on a faceoff. We just never really uh, thought about it. And so he's even changed up his play style on those face off on the, off of the break. And um, now he is still gaining possession without even touching the line whatsoever, which is pretty awesome. Yeah. There's other sports that call it the break, right? And so I'm like, oh, I like that. We call it the face off or, or at the break, right? When the yeah. ref lets go. Spec changing right. up his so game style here. Yeah, he is. So I, I like that. He's going more left of center there. That one was a little more in the middle, but uh, you know, I think it, so. Is he's going to change it up, and that that's a good thing if he if he's noticing that about himself right away. Ooh. That was a good block there. It that, was. That wasn't too bad of a shot. Yeah. No, yeah he was. I like the position that, that Matt was in on that block. Mm -hmm. He was sacrificing yep. the under and. Spec barely missed the under, but he didn't move from blocking the 
what was he blocking the, the cut cross yeah so you know you don't actually have to pull back all the way right um you know and blocking a bank so you don't have to sell out completely where now you're leaving yourself completely susceptible to an over to over to mallet attack that was a nice cross straight beautiful there. You know, you cross. cross yeah there was a player yesterday at the arcade Zachary Folden, he's one of our new rising stars here. Mm -hmm. Oh, another hey. cross. There we go. Now we're seeing the shot of the day. <laughs> yeah. And Zachary was playing against David, and he said, man, David keeps getting me on the over and under. And he goes, how can I block both at the same time? And I said, well, that sounds like a silly question, but there's actually a very simple answer to that. You're expecting me to say that there is no way to block both, but in reality, all you need to do, oh, beautiful left wall over, yeah, off speed. Over. And so all you have to do is move your mallet up a little bit, up into the left a tiny bit. And he didn't believe me. He said, really? I mean, he, he trusts me, but he didn't really believe it, if you will. And so I said, hey, move your mallet up a bit. So he does, he moves it up. And I told David just to fire as many right, you know, wall over and under as he can. Wow, it's a beautiful right wall under my spec there. Yeah. Look at this shot. The pump fake, and it drew Matt completely away from his defense. Yeah, Matt. Matt really. I think he made a decision to charge that before, just you know, way too early, and right. just yeah, just basically sold out for the straight, and, and it's not necessary in all reality. Uh, so he just he basically you know gave that point away. I mean, he's had quite uh -oh. a few uh, successful mm -hmm. rushes, right? But yeah, at this point, it looks like Spec is reading that. So basically, to tell Zach, I just said move your defense up a little bit, and that's how you block both the under and the over. And so he sat there and tried it, and it was working for him, right? So you don't need to pull your mallet all the way back to the goal to block certain shots. Yeah. So it, is, it looks like Scott maybe Scott's the referee, right? Correct. Okay, I, I wasn't sure if he was uh, looking at a replay on that last uh, yeah, possession they, there. I believe that's what was happening as they were looking over the play. Okay. It looked like Spec was contesting that uh, Matt was over the line. So, and it was definitely a close call. Right. It's probably the hardest call, call in air hockey is if both players hit it at the same time or whether or not it was on the line. Because it happens so fast. It is certainly so one of them. I can assure you that. <laughs> We've even thought not about... We, we, we at one point played with the idea of putting a chip in the uh, puck. And so that way it could be tracked across the table. Beautiful cut there. That's the that's the shot that's been winning Matt the most amount of points so far, it seems like right now. Yep. Left wall under forehand by yeah. spec. Bring the game four to four. So that forehand was giving Matt a little bit of trouble at the end oh, of the no. first set as well. And another unforced error for a self score on Matt. It's such a crucial moment yeah. too. Beautiful right shot over. there. Touches himself, so he yeah. sends it over. Yeah, so that one here, you know, he didn't set that straight shot up, and then he charges. Yeah. So those two big errors Matt made there. And you can um, see him, be, you know, it, he waited till the, the puck was hit, but he read it wrong and jumps way forward, leaving his right wall under open. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Two big uh, points in a row that uh, mm, ended that... Ended that uh, game pretty quick. It's mm. the ruthless so replay it's, brought to you by Ruthless yeah, Real Estate. But yeah, but and you're right. Goes. He was in the lead, and then brings himself down. Um, Two games to one now. Uh, spec, um, definitely in the driver's seat still. Um, you know, but I think Matt kind of has a program. He just has to execute it. You know, right? Um, it's so important. Uh, to be able to execute. You know, you can have a game plan all day long, but if you can't, you know, actually perform uh, that game plan, um, then it's almost a new point. So, uh, and you were, you were kind of bringing up, you know, challenge matches as being the best thing for, for practice and getting better. You're, you're, you're right. Um, it's having those pressure type matches or sets, you know, with, with a, a specific person, uh, you know, continuously. Right. And it because because both players adapt, both players realize, OK, this is what you're starting to do. And then they adapt. So now you have to find something different, you know, to continue to win or yep. you end up losing. 
And, um, you know, I can't stress how important it is. I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be like a match per se, but it's got to be competitive. Something with pressure, so, something with something on the line. Exactly. It's exactly so correct. It's like gambling without money, right? Sports bar, yeah, sports bar, something like that, you know, bet a round of beers, whatever you need to do to, to increase the pressure, um, you know, just to, to help simulate that situation. Because, you know, once you're in, um, you know, a big match, that that muscle memory will take over. And the muscle memory is developed when you're when you're, I guess, competing. Right. Um, you know, at these higher levels. I love that you say muscle memory because I've been asked by a lot of players here, you know, what, you know, it's, it's important to train your arm or no, train your, train your head to think about it. They said, no, I actually think it's more important to train your arm. And I asked a lot of pros, what would you say is, is used more, your arm or your head? And they said, well, if you were to suddenly switch to your opposite hand, you'd be a lot worse, which tells you it's not as much your head because your head stays the same. But if you're suddenly playing left handed, for example, you're going to lose a lot of that because it's not as much in your head as it is in the muscle memory. You do a lot of things just instinctually that your arm just does because it's been trained to do so. Your mind comes into play with strategy, but as far as physical prowess, that's really a lot in your arm. You might disagree with me on this one. Um, and I'd actually love to hear your take on how much you think is your arm versus how much you think is your head. Well, obviously, you know, it, it's kind of all one and the same, right? I mean, I, I, I get it what you're saying with the, the uh, by the way, Matt just won another. Face I know. Just, just, just uh, grabbed it right off the bat again. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, I, I think um, you have to, to, I don't know, I guess it's hard for me to separate, I guess, the brain with the arm. But I mean, it's just kind of like one extension, right? It's the right. extension of the brain. And then you have an extension with your left arm, like if you're going to switch or something like that. But it is different. Beautiful cut. So, so there, yeah. So it's definitely something that's different. Um, you know, whether or not it's, um, you know, um, something that I could just say, hey, it's between, you know, it's the brain and it's not your arm or something. I can't really do that. Um, I, I think it's just all the one piece. But, but again, learning that memory under stress is so important. That's the key. Right. Um, because everyone gets tired. I mean, I don't care how in great a shape you are, but if, if both players are in the perfect shape and, you know, you're constantly just pounding each other uh, when it comes to Beautiful offense, chase. offense, offense, and defense, you know, eventually Ooh. somebody wears out mentally. This back-to-back -back right. points here. And uh, uh, this is a fun one. I can tell that both of them have, have taken it up a notch right now, but I, I agree with what you're Ooh. saying that, look at that double wall on that one, that uh, the ultimate teacher, I think, is a little bit of being out of your comfort zone. I find that I learn a lot yes. better when I'm out of my comfort zone and trying something a little bit new that I have to do because I have to make an adjustment rather than just being well ahead of the game and just trying stuff for fun. Beautiful cross by Matt. Another cross straight. Bringing the score three to four. He's got that advantage. Well, nope, now it's tied again. Forehand left wander. That's one spec, a lot of points in the set. Matt goes, still shooting from the 20 yard line. Ooh, left wall over, off speed. Can he keep the lead? Spec right wall under, ties it up. Ties it up. Mm, maintain possession. Right wall under oh, again. Goodness. Bringing it now, game point to five. Spec only needs to get one more point plus one more game to close out this entire set. Ooh, rapid oh, fire by man. Matt, loses possession. Yeah, Matt rushed that pretty badly. Right. He's, he's, at the end of the game, he's got to relax a little bit and take his time. Right, like right there, you know, it didn't set up a shot and almost yeah. uh, almost got a goal scold. He actually blocked that right wall under by Spec. Back gains possession. That was a critical possession too. Loses possession. This is match chance to tie it up. Goes for it. Down the straight. That is it. Oh, there it is for the the. Oh, does he think the game's over? No, he calls a timeout. Matt calls a timeout as it's in Specs goal, and yep. that is, that so, is well within the rules. 
So the shot before that, Matt hit that from the middle of the goal. It didn't do anything, but he fortunately got it back. As it was kind of making a rebound, the, the way the puck naturally set up, it was actually left of center. So he hit a cut straight from exactly where it was, and the lane was there. So that's why that worked. All right, huge point. Oh, speckles oh, for goodness. that left hand, or that, the, the forehand. Yeah. Matt loses oh. possession. Speck has another shot at this game. Goes for another forehand, loses possession. Matt sets it up. Goes for the right wall under, deflected. Goes for the left wall under, deflected. Goes for that cut, loses possession. Yeah. Oh, Speck oh, goes for goodness. the right wall over. It barely bounces out of the goal, but it was wide open. Matt rushed it again. Oh, Speck, Speck calls yeah. a timeout this time. <laughs> Six to six. It's it's been yeah. that way for a good minute or two now. Yes. Matt has uh, got to take his time if he gets that puck again, and really think about where he's hitting it from. And it's, you know, it's these moments that it, it's it's the most difficult, right? Because again, this is the pressure pack moment. But right now, it's all about defense for him. Ooh. Oh my goodness! It was again he, yeah, there. Yeah, he could. He could add it. Here was, we go. Oh, he gets possession back. Sets it up down the middle, goes for the cut, loses possession. And a right yep. wall over yeah. ends that game. So that right wall over, it was it ended up going under the mallet. Um, again, that little hesitation by spec was all he needed to get that by Matt. Right. And uh, that, that was huge. I mean, he's now up three games to one with the potential to finish the match um, right here. Uh, he's got three games to do it, uh, right. to close it out. So uh, definitely in a great position. Uh, you know, I, I'd say that this set uh, a lot more competitive. I think the pace for both players has kind of picked up just a little bit. Uh, you know, both guys are kind of, you know, finding uh, little things that are working on, on each other. Right. Um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm liking what I'm seeing, you know, from Matt um, until it becomes those those pressure moments. And then all of a sudden he's kind of going right back to hitting it from the middle of the table, um, you know, rushing his shots and whatnot. And who ended up winning that last game? It right. was Speck, who took his time at, in the, and delayed that release just enough to get it by uh, Matt. And you can see so. that... Um... In that last game too, you can see how much possession time that Spec had. You can see that he was holding the puck even with the mallet being new and, and being very hard and being very hard to keep possession. He had possession for almost that entire 6-6 six, six transaction. Yeah, yeah. And again, you know, the, the great Jesse Dowdy, uh, you know, also 11-time world champion, uh, when I was learning how to play, you know, told me, he taught me that lesson about possession possession time you know you build up that possession time uh you know it'll build up the pressure in your opponent and uh you know to me it made sense because i mean i was a big you know as a, as a adolescent i was big in the football so you know the, one of the big statistics in football is possession time you know if, if you're an offense and and you you know you're driving the ball up and down the field even if you're coming away with three points or maybe no points, but your possession time is built up so much, you're wearing down the defense. So at the end of the game, you're typically moving the ball, you know, very easily. Right. So, And I, I can definitely here. attest to that. If somebody keeps possession the whole game, it, you know, it gets me more and more antsy. I start making more mistakes because I just want it, right? I'm like a dog and you're holding the, the tennis ball. Ooh, that's probably the first one that spec won on that. Yeah, it might be. Ooh, and immediately Ooh, puts great. it away. Yeah. But yeah, if you you know if you're holding that tennis ball and pretending to throw it, and you, the longer you hold that that tennis ball, right, the more anxious the dog gets, and that's exactly how I am. And many players are that when you're holding that puck, um, the longer that you're holding it for, the more anxious they get. Yeah. So, so far, you know, Matt Matt tried, you know, two kind of quick right wall overs. Oh, that was an unfortunate theory. Yeah. You can see Spec first shot blocked, but Spec tapping on his goal so afterwards to show some, you know, respect. Is basically yeah. just saying, "Ooh, sorry for that." 
Yeah. Yeah, but Matt's got to, again, take his time, you know, not hit from that middle of the, of the table. And it's easier said than done. I mean, you know, I'm not, not taking anything away from uh, from anybody. It, it, it's, it's, it's not easy to do. It was a good block there by Matt. It was. Got, it almost looked like it went in for a second. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Matt sets it up, goes for the cross. Good hustle by Matt yeah. to maintain possession. Speck looks very relaxed right now. I feel like he must be thinking that he has this whole entire set in a bag. He's already up 2-0 in this game. And this yeah. is a set game. Possible set game. Yeah, and if you see where Speck is defensively, see, he, he, and that's why that cross really worked. Because he's, he's really so far, far back. back. Yeah. He's so far back in where he's setting up the, 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 the pyramid or the peak of his, of his defense. That, Beautiful you know, get for, by for, Yeah. Yeah, for, for a uh, most pro, pro players, when they see that, they're going to start drooling because they're going to be, hit, you know, it's going to be straight city. Right. Ooh. Fun control there. Mm. Oh, another oh, unforced no. error. Spec is now three points away from closing the set out. The match, correct? Yeah, yeah the, the match. match right? Yeah. Ooh, on the line. Yeah. Good no call by the referee there. Right. Ooh, oh, nice <laughs> I really, I, I don't know if I can get that on replay. That was, I was too Very excited nice. to see that. Yeah, he, he pushes it up against the wall and pulls it back and yep. then pulls out a score. Great get. Speck with the pump fake, hoping to pull Matt away from his yeah. defense, but then still clears the right wall under. Five to two. So I, I, I think it's that drift that he's doing when he's setting up his shot there. It, it Oh, my goodness. Match point to tournament. Or, yeah, match point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, match point. If, he, if Speck gets one more point, this match is over. Ooh. Matt loses possession. This, is, this could be it right here. Blocked. Loses possession. Matt sets it up. Oof. Uh oh, great. Matt's going for the rapid fire. Is it going to work? Let's see. Uh, that looks okay. like it was rushed. That looks like that Beck was moving forward on that block. Yeah, oh, and, and he's already just saying that he charged, but yeah, it definitely was a yeah. charge. Yeah. They make it easy to ref when they uh, call themselves on it. Yeah. Good block by Matt there. Ooh, Speck takes possession away, a beautiful get, and then closes oh, out this entire match. match with a cut shot on Matt. Yeah. You can see it here. Spec. Pulls it back, goes for the, what, I mean, it was a it was a fast one too, it was almost a push. Yeah, yep, so, so again, you know, if you see where Matt's defense on that last shot there, he kind of just kind of froze and kind of went down just a little bit, and all he did was kind of, kind of give up you know really both straight shots um you know but a lot of that again the constant i guess you know pressure you know that spec was providing really the entire match um you know so it was, it was a good match good job by spec um so this takes uh number is that number three now in idaho is that uh, it will because you know we're trying something very new where we're going off of ratings instead of rankings where the ratings just okay. sort of pick their their it's basically we're just being lined up by ratings. So if somebody has more sure. ratings than the other person, then they're higher than the other person is. And that just sort of shows where the rank is. And we, we kind of did a, a um, what do you call a, uh, oh, I can't even think of the word. We, we demoed out what it would what it was gonna look like with their scores if they each won. And so we showed it out and if Spec won this game, then he would be taking that rank over because of his the points that he'd be gaining from it. So he is now number three right. in Idaho, which is really fun. Um, I'm gonna go grab Matt. Uh, Spec, how do you how do you feel about your win? It was easy. Oh, no. <laughs> I let I let him know I'm with my defense on the last game, so that's why I, I kind of like just put a whole wall on on in front of him. Oh man! No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, he's he's a great fight. 
all sorts of seats here. No, Matt's a great fight. We're, we're always having this big rivalry between us and, you know, he's grown a lot and, we've grown, and I've grown a lot too. And I was expecting more overs against him, as you can see. Yeah. I mean, he did win a lot of those games. I think he won, yeah, two games with those, all those overs. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah. He, he he hits the over very well. Um, yeah, I was I was really expecting more of that out of him, but he hit kept hitting um, straight shots, which I haven't seen from him a lot before. Yeah, yeah. So and and that was kind of the key where he kind of pushed you a little bit there, you know, when he started really hitting more of those straights and kind of test that mallet out a little bit, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that was probably the best thing that you could have experienced. Um, you know to you know this evening so that way you could actually see um you know because because you know come nationals come the worlds in august uh-huh um yeah i'll be know, i'll be bringing this whole mallet to uh worlds and everybody yeah, will be checking yeah, it out you're gonna have guys <laughs> hit, hit that cross and that power straight on you you know they're, gonna, they're not gonna be scared of hitting that mallet they, they want to see it they want to see uh, how this, it is, this is basically indestructible there's no seam it's all machined out of one whole block of um, Dalaran, this, this is made out of. Yeah, very nice, very nice. Well, like I said, uh, you know, great job tonight, Spec. Uh, played good, you played strong, you did what you needed to do. Um, you know, I think you were pretty consistent with your attacks uh, in key moments. You know, you did a really good job of holding that release, you know, to get behind Matt's defense. Uh, you know, you kept him off balance just enough, um, you know, uh, you know, hats off to you, man. So that's you're, pretty you're good. now uh, number number three, and uh, you know, I'm sure that uh, Matt will bounce back here quick and uh, um, probably hit you up <laughs> for another challenge match here right. soon. Uh, I I mean, I do have I have one more challenge match today, and that's a, between me and Scott Arnold. So he'll he so he might take my number three title. Who knows? <laughs> okay, well, yeah, you never know. You never know, Matt. I I look. Uh, Nothing to hang your head about. Uh, that second set, I think, was a lot stronger. You know, you take away that that last game there, you had a lot of just, you know, bouncing around and some unfortunate, you know, bounces of that puck. But uh, I think you kind of found something in that second set. Uh, the straight shot kind of came alive for you. And, uh, you know, I, I think at key moments, though, you still kind of went back to hitting from the middle um, and, I, and I'll say, uh, when you go back and watch the video, uh, take a look at, like, there, there's the one drift that you kind of have the puck where it starts a little more towards the center of the line. You kind of bring it back. And when you're bringing it back toward you, you, you actually bring it back towards the middle of the table. And then you're, you're setting your shots up from there. My, my suggestion to you is to get rid of that drift and actually have them further back uh, start from further back and move it towards the line at the point where you want to strike it from. And obviously you can change it up where it bounces off the rail and you get more of like a side type of drift. So, you know, you're constantly you, where I can hit it. So I can hit it from left of center. I can hit it from right of center or far from right of center um, or far from left of center, you know, but um, again, that, that would be kind of you know a little, a little something to work on right but i think that i and i think you would agree you know you, you started seeing hey you know what you do have a cross straight you do have a, a cut straight and uh all those things can work um you just got to put them together so um would you would you agree with any of that I, or am i, I just i think it's 100 percent. Oh, okay cool cool yeah like i said i i i, I really uh liked how you attacked them the, the, the second set um, again I think it's just got to be um, where you almost kind of get get upset and slightly mental with yourself like I am not going to hit the puck from the middle this middle zone of the table yeah you know and if it's there and I find myself there I'll hit an off goal right to get it back or or I'll just bring it back and then reposition it into the right spot you know I mean uh, Keep in mind, I mean, you know, we got that seven seconds, right? And and probably the average time that we spend on offense is is four seconds, you know? So you have more time to bring it back and make another shot or hit an off goal or something along those lines. Don't feel rushed, you know? 
and uh, you know, worst case, put the pressure on the the referee to make make that call. Uh, you know, of, of you being over seven seconds. Um, I can't tell how many times because because it's so rare that somebody does that. Uh, mm-hmm. I can't tell how many times that certain players they they'll, they'll hold it for eight nine seconds. You know, and the referee's just like waiting for a shot. <laughs> right. But again, we just get so attuned to, you know, waiting and waiting, and waiting, or, or just used to um, seeing these certain shots hit at a certain interval. But, uh, but yeah, man, look, just, uh, I would work on that. Um, defensively, you gotta, you know, uh, get set quicker, um, you know, in transition. A lot of that comes from your legs, okay? When your legs reset your body, it resets your balance. So, uh, you know, you're out here leaning towards the goal. Your legs are going to get you back quicker, right? So you can now be ready to go back and forth uh, when you're playing defense. Um, but it, that all comes from your legs. So um, definitely something to work on, um, you know, but uh, I enjoyed the match. Uh, I wish it went three sets. Uh yeah, that was it's, Speck's uh, decision. He didn't want to. He didn't want to yeah, give me the chance you know, to he, come back. Such a party pooper. I'm a ramp. I, I ramp up, and then he knows uh, that. I just have so many challenge matches to play because everybody's so, so mad at me. <laughs> I have so many to play. So sorry. I'm just gonna have to, you know, end it quicker. Uh, poor, poor guy. <laughs> Anyways, but look, man. Um, you know. Uh, any questions or anything from from either of you guys on on any of it? Um, I th- just think I have a lot to work on, you know. Yeah, yeah, nothing wrong with that. I mean, uh, you know, and and trust me, I you know, Specs got things too. Uh, you know, he needs to go back and look at uh, where his position was. Like um, towards the end, there, he was so far. He he was actually too far back. <laughs> Well, I know like, I loved that. Just, I was like, "This is great" because yeah. he has a mallet that I can exploit. But and he's so far back that I can the, exploit hey, those hey, lanes. That that was yeah. the one game you scored less than me, or less <laughs> less than the whole <laughs> match. Three points. You only scored three points in that whole match or game. Well, that whole set. That's what I was doing. Well, that whole set, you scored more than three points. <laughs> and that one time I held it way back, you scored less on me. <laughs> oh, because there was no overs or in, any banks. Yeah. But but anyway, so so like you know, like I said, everybody can still improve and, and get better. Um, you know, and Specs gonna get even better with that mallet. You know, I'm looking forward to seeing you know how far he can take that. Um, you know, like I said, it, 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 we've had several mallets in the past. Uh, you know, that have had you know a lot of pop off of them. Um, you know, so this new material uh, be interesting to see how it holds up over time. If it kind of softens up a little bit, or if it just gets a little more, you know, harder, uh, that I don't know. This, this material um, is just solid. It, it's like a crystalline plastic, so it just yeah. staying the same hardness as time goes on. <laughs> gotcha. gotcha. There's a lot of people say they've been working with that stuff for years, and it hardly ever changes. Yeah, it's practically okay. indestructible. <laughs> I'd be worried about no. it in the cold and it shattering because no. it's so hard. This, it, it, it has a temperature rating of. 180 degrees Celsius to minus 60 degrees Celsius. So it can okay. this can take a lot of beatings. Don't take it to Antarctica. Well, <laughs> yeah. Down here in Texas, you won't have to worry about the cold. I can assure you that, oh, yeah. especially no, in it August. Was, it was so hot. So. Humid. When I walked outside for the first time, my glasses like fogged up. <laughs> I was like, oh man, I can't even see for like five seconds. Yeah, yeah. Un- unfortunately, that that is how it is. Uh, yeah, our heat and humidity is uh, no joke. So. But, uh, but anyways, yeah, man, um, you yeah, know, look forward to both you guys uh, coming down in August and, uh, you know, uh, keeping, keeping them, you know, you guys got to keep the momentum going in Idaho and, uh, you know, hopefully we get a, an entourage of players. Um, you know, yeah, he's all bringing, bringing his family, and, Nathan's and bringing his up. family, so it's pretty, uh, I'm so, what was that, I'm uh, sorry. Matt's you... bringing his whole family over and also Nathan. So we're going to be, he's going to be preparing them for the juniors championships over there yeah heck yeah that's that's the future right there <laughs> that's the future it, it wasn't that long ago uh there was a young man named colin cummins playing in those uh tournaments so <laughs> right. uh yeah and i remember that 
And uh, I remember looking over there and seeing all these kids going at it. And, and I knew right then, I was like, oh, yeah, we're on borrowed time. And uh, <laughs> sure enough, we were. And uh, I remember same having thing many for, of those conversations. Um, yeah, same, same yeah, thing for having... Josiah. Josiah's yes, going over yeah, there, too. Yeah, looking forward to, to how he's going to perform uh, here coming up in the world. So hopefully he can come down and make it. That'd be great. Great to meet him in person as well. So, um, but anyways, uh, yeah, man. Uh, any any other questions? Any other suggestions or anything, guys? Or no, not really. We're just gonna head on to the next game here. I think yeah, Spec is gonna play the Alley Cat Scott Arnold now, mm-hmm. who has challenged him for his world rank and his state rank, which is mm-hmm. now number uh, two, three. Not number two. Which is now number two. He's now passed. I passed Sam. Sam. Which I don't Very even nice. understand what happened. How many points did I lose? 90? Yeah, you lost 90 points. Okay. This whole system is crazy. If if I had a forfeited before the last point, how many points would I have lost? Um, 50. 50 points. Okay, that's good to know. <laughs> so you would have really would have fared better if you retired or uh, forfeited. Oh, yeah. If that's the case, you might want to rethink that system. If, if, yeah, because you don't want people were leaving a, a match or something. Or, oh or yeah, I mean, we we did have it at one point to for you to lose like 150 points at, at one point. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to. Uh, yeah, there's know, still flaws to, to work out, and um, it's, it's still yeah. a test. Okay, but well, we're, yeah, you, you we know, want this to we want this to evolve into something better. I'm and doing it, my yeah. best to break it, so oh, we'll yeah. see what happens. <laughs> Doing everything I can so they can modify it. We've already made one um, yeah, modification. He, he farmed his whole family, if you haven't heard. <laughs> yeah. No, I did not. <laughs> I played a bunch of randoms at the arcade and a bunch of uh, my my family. I, my, actually, my son had the the uh, the sack to challenge me, but the rest of my family did. I was like, hey, play me a play me a set. <laughs> and so seven zero for my daughter, and then you know seven one for the rest of them. On a a bunch of games Matt, and I, I turned I thought you I thought you might be able to score more than than one and zero against your kids though I, I'm, <laughs> I'm confused no I I got seven they got zero no I know I'm kidding with you <laughs> so but it, my son did he actually won a game against me and I was like very proud nice. and I was like that's that's really Heck good yeah. dude that's I was I was even pretty much trying to not let you do that so that's very good and we had him out here the other day. I posted a video on the American Air Hockey uh, Facebook with him uh, mm-hmm. playing with everybody out here. We did a, a little doubles impromptu doubles tournament, tournament and he uh, he did pretty good with Nathan as his partner. He uh, Very nice. clutched out a couple key points to to win a game. For Sam, I think it was Sam and nice. Sam, Sam and Andrew. And Andrew. Or Landon. Uh, I think Landon already gone, but he. Wow. I was like, so I, I got video of that, so I was pretty good. Got a good, some good overs. His over game is pretty good. It's just like you. <laughs> I was like, that's pretty good, dude. You should use that at the when we do the tournament at the arcade. <laughs> so yeah, when he's, he gets we'll learned up on defense gonna... and puck control, I think he's going to be dangerous. Yeah, one day we're going to have to, you know, send in some players for some genetic testing to see if, uh, you know, if there there's something to do with, you know, the genetics because. You know, you're talking about your son can hit some some mean right wall overs and stuff. You know, all the Weissmans can hit these ridiculous right wall unders. So definitely something to do with the genetics there, I think. I I don't know. I'm I'm for the the nurture over nature when it comes to stuff like that. It's a it's a trained thing. I mean, you have somebody that has the the gift of doing that particular thing. They're going to train a certain way, and that is going to come out in their training and the people that watch them do that they're going to emulate what you do and kids are usually very observant in what you're doing and they'll emulate exactly what you're doing and they'll come out with very similar skills oh yeah no doubt no doubt which is my theory on that 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 kind of thing as far as you know the kids having similar traits in sports and stuff as their parents yeah yeah no doubt and uh you know they obviously watching and emulating uh you know their parents but at the same time you know really uh something also that the parent maybe 
it's easier for the parent to explain why they do this and why it works and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So it just translates, uh, you know, to the generations a lot easier, I think, as well. So, um, but good deal. All right, guys. Well, I guess, I guess I'm about to get out uh, since you guys are done. And uh, like I said, right, I appreciate then. you guys yeah, having me. On. We got one oh, more sorry? game. We got one more game here in a little bit. If you want to stay, oh, you talking about? The, oh, you're playing tonight. Yeah. Yeah, he's gonna do one more versus Scott and. Um, Scott and uh, okay. Speck are gonna be play quick. one more. I, I promise you, it'll be quick. <laughs> Listen, do you do you hear him? Hey, it was quick against this guy. His, you know? The smack talk. It wasn't as quick as you said it was gonna be. Okay, okay. I'm not gonna. Uh, listen. Sam, we, we Speck spelled, spelled retarded wrong on the thing. <laughs> it was autocorrect. Sorry. Did you take it off? It's off there now. I, I grayed his name out. I made him take it off. Okay. All right. Well, uh, I'll, I'll get if on. You want to hang out? I'll stay. I'll stay here while he goes yeah, and gets ready. Send Nathan back in there. Nobody wants a spec to commentate, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> he's very. He's too. He's too hype. I gotta change the. How um, many? How many points did you get? Me, I got 132. Nice. If you were 20 or 19 more points higher than me, we would have. I don't know, that would be still a little weird. I still would have got. Well, I'm glad that your uh, ELO system has benefited you so well. You tried to abuse it. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm, I was trying to reach the limitations within the rules that you set. Well, it's a good thing you did that. Now it's better. Yeah, so my, my question on the ELO thing uh, to, to Nathan earlier was, like, so let's say shot of the week is uh, the crawl straight, which it is right now, right? And you know you have uh, you're playing a juggernaut when it comes to blocking those cross straights. Uh, who doesn't let those go in, no matter what you do. Yeah. Um, you me. know, versus that that's that's what what I have to play, right? I'm the number one player. Let's say that. And uh, the number two player just happens to be playing. Uh, you know, the number four player who's an open house when it comes to cross straights. He lets every one of them go in. You could. Yeah, you, you, you hit a power straight and somehow it ends up being crossed. That's how bad his defense on cross straights are. Well, if the number two player actually outperforms me on that particular shot because I can't get him in even though I may still I may still win, but I don't get as many points. So Well, you only get then, one point per shot. Well, if you hit 128 of them. I mean, <laughs> if you, if you, you let know, 128 of them go in, that's kind of your fault. You're probably going to lose anyways. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, if, if, if I have somebody who's literally just a, well, you know, uh, he, he lets every cross straight I'll, go in. I'll let you know that Scott is is very um, susceptible to the cross straight. So we're going to see that here a little bit. <laughs> well, right. I, I have no doubts. I have no doubts, but but again, yeah, no, you know, I just want this. I just want this is, thing to be fun, you know. It's just for fun. No, no, I I know, I know, but I'm I'm me. I'm always like, all right, checks and balance kind of thing, and uh -huh. like, you know, who's to say that, you know, whoever decides what the shot of the week is going to be, that they don't, um, you know, they all right. Well, the number one guy is playing the the number four guy who's susceptible to this this particular shot. That's what the shot has to be this week, so we can take out the number one guy or something along those guys. No, I, I pick you it know, on a random wheel. I just spin a wheel and, and just have him get picked on that. He does this in, you, you, it, by himself. You actually have a wheel? Yeah. In his underwear. <laughs> and it's, it's, there's a, I like just, a I just spin it. <laughs> he has a shrine with candles and stuff. Like the wheel of fortune, but the wheel of shots. Yeah. Well, it benefited <laughs> you because I couldn't even hit a, hit a cross on you, so what does that even matter? This time. Actually, like I, all my shots have been right wall unders against you, uh, Matt. Bro, yeah, that's the one I was letting go. So you blocked my point shots, and then you let my unders in. Okay. 
I have all my gains just gone down the drain. Well, you're still third or fourth. Yeah, it's not as cool as third. Well, once you play enough weeklies, you can, you can just pass uh, Sam. Scott is ready. As okay, I gotta go. All right, right Nathan. Right, right, right. Are you coming back, Nathan? Uh, no. Do you want to accommodate unless you want to be rep? Yeah. What? Do you want to rep or do you want to accommodate? What? Aren't you coming back? I guess Nathan's leaving. He's going to go rep. Okay. So I go over here. So I have to run this board and and do this, which I am not qualified okay, to man. do. So, I mean, that's, that's their funeral. It's not my fault. <laughs> Oh wow, look at they're, they're already changing all this stuff and All right, well, I'm going to get off for just a minute, Matt, and I'll, and I'll be right back here in a little bit. I'll try to be, be right back. Okay? All right. I will do my best to hold the fort down. Oh, you you'll do great. I'll be give you just a minute. All right. Oh, did you see? So, so Sam, like he uh, just got, he just got 132 points per his the ELO system, and jumped to the number two spot with 804. I don't understand all these these numbers and stuff. Oh, he, it's because he got a 35 point buff for overtake. There's an overtake rule, plus 35 points, which in addition to the match win, which was 25 points, and the set wins. So here we go, game one. Scott the Alley Cat, Arnold, gets the first point and possession of the game. That specs a very high performance. Mallet X doing his work and getting a first cross, which I guess this counts for one point. Yeah, it's, you know, I don't know if I'm a fan, but I'm, you know, trying it out, see how it's going to work, but the jury's still out for me, so I'm trying to do it the way it's supposed to be working to see how we can make it work or if we can make it better or we, how we can incorporate the ELO system in before I start, you know, to poo poo it. But, you know, if it can't, then I'll just file a report with the, the group and then we'll go from there. But it just can't be too OP to where people can just run, run wild. Oh, and, Scott gets stuffed, gerbed on right there. Good control. I wonder if Scott realizes that Specs Mallet right there is, is a weak point for him, and if he just sends bomb. Good, nice over, right wall over for, from Scott. Oh, I can hit. Um, Oh, I can do instant replays now. Another Gerber from from Spec. Spec's mallet is so hard that it's, it's a really nice mallet to do that to. You just set it back in there. So you guys that don't like that, does it not work like that in other sports? Five five, tied up. Ooh, nice cross. Ooh, Spec thought it was in, but it just bounced out, ripped out by Scott.
Oh, big whiff by Scott. Speck gets control back, sets it up, tries to get that in, but doesn't go in. Goes for another Gerb. Not going to play out for Speck. Scott sets up a shot. Not going to happen. And Scott wins the set right there. Oh, and I hit the, the final shot, the ruthless replay. Too late as they walk away, and my shame is complete for missing that replay. Sorry, guys. They're taking their two minutes. Somebody put me at this control panel by myself. Who did that? Hmm? Would this be another one? Would this be another one? Overtake if Scott wins? So it's weird when there's nobody else to talk to. I guess I could talk to chat. What's up chat? How are you guys doing? So Nubs doesn't like the ELOs. Sam doesn't like the ELO. The new ELO. I don't know yet. That's cool, that's all right. Yeah, you can get in. I'm surpri actually surprised you're not even here. Should have come over. But my, what I'm wondering is, it, is it, does it not work like that in other, other sports is, was my, what I'm wondering. Does the yellow control the ranks of other other sports like that? Like similar similarly scored sports like the ping pongs and the the esports with the ranking system that we're we're going for like skill ranking system. Beck gets first possession. Sets up his shot with his. I don't. It it meets the weight requirement for the uh, per the rules. It's under that uh, six ounce um, maximum. I saw somebody ask earlier if it was if it was legal. So I would, I'm going to say yes, it is, per USAA rules. Um, it's fashioned the same way, it's under the weight, so I guess so. So I'm not sure. Scott sets up a shot. I already played, and I, I lost to spec. I had... Um, it was super close, and uh, I just didn't get it done this time. But uh, next right. time, Gadget, next time. I jumped in to fill in for Danny while he's gone. Oh, Danny's back. <laughs> so, <laughs> so late. More the merit. What are you guys doing? What's up, Sam? How are you guys doing? Now there's too many people. Oh, I know this is I know this is going to scare everybody. What are you doing? Oh. Is it? Is it? 
What's that? The, the, the mop on your head there? I know. Mom, I already played and I lost. <laughs> Ooh, nice. But you can go uh you can go rewind it or go look at it if you want to watch the match. But so what, what, what do we miss here so far, Matt? So uh, uh, Scott has won the first match or first game, I said I should say, and uh, uh, Spec just wasn't uh, bringing his. Uh, his game. I don't think he was aggressive enough, and Scott is full power and was do doing those crosses that um, Spec is a little bit vulnerable to. Yeah. See what? Um, I agree with you on that one. What I also what I saw was um, Spec should have given him a, given himself a little bit more time just to like chillax after that last set after the last game, and then giving him some time to warm up before just going straight into Scott. That's what I would have done, but I don't know exactly how it works for him, but. I don't know. It may be a case of uh, Spec being a little bit overconfident in his abilities. Yeah. It'll happen, trust me. I mean, Spec has got a, a large muscle mass, and large muscle masses tend to get tired um, longer than those that don't he's a good weightlifter how, how old is spec again he's like 20, 20 21 i think he turns 22 22 in a couple months he's either 21 or 22 yeah yeah at, at that age i i probably could have played 100 100 games a night no problem yeah. <laughs> so i don't know i have the problem because of the how late everybody plays after getting off of work and then coming driving all the way to Nate's house. Uh, I have a problem trying to do multiple matches in a night. But you have like the body of like a fifty year old person. That is fair. That is fair. Inside. <laughs> I, a time he has a time clock issue. Oh, that was a nice little left wall under there, hit by step. It was. If I'm playing more than one person in a night, I have to bring my knee braces. But so you have some knee issues? Oh, I I have problems with both of my knees. Okay. Yeah. So what what is that from a different sport that you're playing or Um my doctor doesn't know. We don't know if it was be between uh sliding in baseball or playing football. I know where it's from. Um, get your get your mind out of the gutter. Um, but it's it was either between just damage over time between those two sports, or it was a, with a problem with how my knees, like how my legs grew. So it's just kind of something we'll never know. But I can get them. I'm supposed to wait till 25, and I'm most likely getting surgery for them. Okay, so maybe you had, a, but, uh, had an MRI already or no? Dang, um, I think I took, I need to take another one. I have I had to reschedule another one soon. I took one uh two or three, two or three years ago, okay. and my if I remember correctly, I think it was, um, my bones were too close together. So every time I would move my knees, they would grind. Okay, so your cartilage, you have cartilage uh, issues then. Yeah. 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 Okay, so we're now uh, one one game apiece. Uh, you know, spec all night so far. It's kind of showing a little bit of a uh, still showing our uh, replay. You know, six six battle in him. Uh, I guess you could say he's, he's done a really good job. Oh my! Overall, God. winning some pretty big points. Sam, you look like a broccoli. You got a haircut. All right, in my defense, I did just get out of the shower, and it's supposed to be all back. It's supposed to be all be pressed back, not like all a, the way forward. Like a gangster? Yeah, not everybody yeah. can have perfect hair like me every day. I know. <laughs> Shoot, Danny, I should have mailed you all my excess hair. <laughs> no, that's all right. I, I, I just got to shave my back whenever I need some extra hair. It's okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, it was weird walking out of. Um, I got I got it 
cut yesterday. It was weird because my hair was down to dang near down to my shoulders. It was weird going inside and then walking outside. It was like 20 degrees different weather wise. But. So the, the history uh, between Spec and Scott, um, I think this is my first time watching these two play each other. Um, you know, I, 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 I've watched Scott a couple times. I, I saw last week where Sam, you, you took Scott out. Uh, I think it was three straight sets, if I recall. Yep. And then, uh, you know, and, and I've, obviously I've seen Spec play a couple times and then tonight included, you know, where he just beat Matt. Um, just what, what, barely. What's the, Come on, history? <laughs> what's the history between these two guys? They don't play very often. Um, Spec doesn't make it to the uh, weeklies because of his work, and Scott almost exclusively comes down to the weeklies to play. He, well, he does come Mondays and stuff, but they just don't play a lot together. So it's. I think this is. You go. It's just new for both of them to play each other. I think so. It's, like a, it's like a situation like you would encounter at Worlds where you're just not very familiar with somebody and you, you've played them a bit, but just not to the point of knowing their every move. Sure. I think this is gonna. This is the first time I've ever seen them play. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. But I'm also... I never go to the weeklies either, and I don't show up to every Monday. I kind of play on my own. Yeah. Well, piece. you got uh, what just a couple or a week or so left, and it's Indiana time, right? I so I have what day is it? It's the eighteenth. I leave on the fifth, so I have the rest of this week and then two weeks. Two weeks on Friday. Is on spring break. Me? No, I got work. Oh. What do you even? I do? work every day. I'm a maintenance man. Oh, okay. Hate my job. Absolutely hate it. Oh, a little stuff from uh, Spec there. Yeah, that's I think the third Gerber for Spec. I think I. Wow, I think that's the the third time that Spec has done that to Scott. His mallet's very good for that that rebound that he gets. Just by being there, just that was a great block by Scott in the, in the goal. And a oh, beautiful transition shot by Scott. Good reaction. Oh, you know what? I, I have the button to do the replays. I haven't been doing the replays. I'm bad. I don't have the button, so you can't blame me. Yeah, watch. Here, I'll do it now. I'm good now. Look at this. I'll have to say that I loved playing Spec because his mallet made it very difficult for him to control the puck the way he wanted to, and I felt it was frustrating him a lot. Yeah, it, it seems like. Um, um, have you played with my the low top low top that I got from Lewis, Matthew Matt? No. Oh, it feels like that. It's like. It, at least it looks like that. It, it sounds like it. Yeah, it's very. Louis Cervantes. It's very offensive. Yeah, very offensive based. This is the mm. same. It's very a very offensive yeah. mallet. Let me see if I can. I have Almost right exclusively. But he's getting the the hang of it. I mean, it's not something that's insurmountable as far as a useful device. Yeah. This is the low top that I got from Lewis. Yeah, I remember it. Yeah. It's very hard. It's very offensive based. It's not, I don't like it for defense at all. Oh, 6-6 six, six now is, is Speck able to put away and he does. Yeah, another, and here's the final shot. Six, six courtesy of Ruthless Speck. Real Estate. And Speck does his Ooh. true right wall under, which is his most... Yes. Um, you, you watch that consistent point, shot. Um, you, you watch how controlled Spec was in his motion and his, you know, his release. You know, and I'm not sure what Scott was doing there defensively, but he was going back and forth, for you know, up and down. So I don't know if he was just trying to prevent Spec from kind of getting a key 
you know, but I think it worked against uh, One of Scott quite a bit there and just really opened himself up, um, you know, for a bank shot. Yeah, and that's a, um, that's a point that you touched on is Scott moves a lot on defense. And if you time it right, you can exploit that. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and unfortunately, like, you know, when that... When a, when a player does that, it's typically because they really don't know what to do defensively, you know? So they're kind of, uh, instead of like just, you know what, I'm going to just be disciplined, I'm going to just stay out there, and I'm going to force him to bank on me. Uh, so they're all over the place, you know, thinking that you're going to, you know, kind of outsmart yourself or something along those lines. Uh, but again, it, it just it never seems to really work in the favor you know, uh, of that kind of defense. Because uh, an offensive player typically catches on really quick as to how to time that and, and use that against you. So, um, oh, I didn't know yeah, Scott was I, in I, his 40s. Scott, he's, how old is Scott? I don't know. I thought, his Scott, mom said it was, I thought Scott was 37. Yeah, his mom just said he's older than me. Yeah. But, I don't know. I feel like... Scott has a chance with this game. I don't know. I I've played Scott a lot. Pat. I think I've played him in like three challenge matches in the past couple of months. Mm -hmm. um, um, he has a lot of stuff that I know it's is going to be hard for Spec. Um, but I think he needs to focus on his his um, cut and right while under. I know those are if you can get a really good cut and right while under combo going against spec that's normally what i use whenever i play him no and it tends to work for me he not was trying all to... over the right wall under today but um not so that's why you over, just start shooting off goals on his was, cut side was and just open. get him start because he'll because spec will start flinching to that cut side if you just do off goals and you keep scoring cuts and then you get that right wall open wide, right wall under wide open and that's a good that's a good point because you and it looks like spec have a you know difficulty with scott whereas i don't so much because i play him so much at the arcade yeah i yeah it's just i like i said i don't get to play stock scott whole bunch but like matt you and i've played a lot i think you it's either you or it's probably you right now that's in Idaho that I've played the most. I just never remember it, that. Huh? Here's the break for game four. Scott gains possession and scores a nice right wall under. Yeah, good, a good uh, angle he hits. Uh, oh, wow, nice. You know, that, I don't right think he intended under. to do that, but it worked for him. Yeah, so that, that right there, I, I, I kind of noticed this earlier too in the, in the games that mm. whenever um, Scott is over there and he's playing, you know, with his right right arm and he's far over in the right quadrant, he pretty much is hitting a right bank every time. Which yep. Is, uh, you know, really readable and Spec picks up on it really quick. So Spec is just charging at every time. There it is. He charged it. So there was nothing. You know, he, he's blocking every shot out of it because that literally is all he has to do. So, and there he goes over to the left quadrant, and I guess, you know, uh, Scott is telegraphing that bank um, from the left when he's trying to hit the left uh, bank. Yeah, and, and he'll go with the right wall over most of the time, and then every once in a while he'll shoot a right wall under, and then he'll also every once in a while use it, shoot across from it. But they all look a little bit different when I, at least when I play them. Yeah. So it's and, and that, somewhat that's easy. A bad thing. <laughs> somewhat yeah, easy to notice, but I always have problems with his over in that, in that one spot right there. Yeah, yeah he's got to figure out how to make the shots all look the same um, and be able to kind of hit multiple shots from multiple locations. Um, but that doesn't mean that. You go to one location and I only hit one, maybe two shots from this one location, then go to another location 
and then hit another one or two shots. You need to hit every shot from one location and go to another location and hit every shot from that location. If that makes any sense. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, nice. Nice. Who's going to lose it and he just gets it back. Yeah, good save. Nice little Good pressure hole. on spec. Yeah, so he's he's about ten years younger than both Matts. He's about fifteen years older than me. <laughs> they are all still kids, <laughs> comparatively to a lot of people in the air hockey community. I mean, look at yeah. Mark Robbins, man. I know, I'm a kid to him. He, he can just nice over. See, that over, I will say, it's kind of tricky because you expect, at least when on the table playing him, I always expect that right wall under from that section, and then it'll just shoot and over, and it works, but not all the time. If you don't turtle, then you should be okay on that over. But a bunch of, well, at least from what I notice, a bunch of new, newer players go super close to that right wall and shoot a perfect right wall under don't, don't have any other shots so my like my mind's kind of in like just expecting that right wall under and then he hits you with that over yeah, wow look at that under that was great actually it looked like that was an over was it oh i guess if somebody yeah. had pushed the replay yeah, button then we would have seen yeah gosh who is running this board it's terrible <laughs> i'm just into the game i'm watching this and scott's doing pretty good Ooh, I don't know if he meant to hit it that soft, but if he try, if he was trying to do an off speed, I'd suggest doing a little bit more speed on that. But Spec gives it right back. Yeah, I think that he missed hit it. Um, yeah, we got you know again, Spec's kind of charging those lanes uh, because he's, he feels comfortable, um, you know, with what Scott is doing here. Now, Spec could do a better job of managing his oh, possessions. No. Oh, no. Unforced error there by Scott. See, if I was yeah. Scott, actually, he's doing it. He's taking taking a breather, just letting that mess up just go away. Forget about it. It's in the past. You can't do anything about it. Just go on and keep playing. I miss those days of Sam just blowing up and melting down. <laughs> Hey, man, oh, wow. I will say, nice. That looked clean to me. It did not look over. That was good. That was great. Yeah, it's good. In transition. And now Ooh, we're suddenly game we're point, at six, game six. point. Another key 6-6 six, six battle here. Let's see a spec and hit three in a row. Oh, no. Yeah, Ooh. And, then, and then Scott gets that in with a beautiful over. Two games apiece. With a ruthless replay. Are they doing a three out of five? Uh, I think it's best. Uh, best of three, I believe. Two out of three. Yeah. Two out of three. Yeah, Specs trying to make them short. And so, then Matt, did you guys do a three out of five or two, two out, out of three? three? Because I was challenging Spec for his world rank, so he decided he wanted so to make them short. So Specs just scared is is what it sounds like. Because he knows I can ramp it up. And I was ramping it up. Ramp it up. cut me off at the knees, man. He knows. He's smart. Spec is smart in strategy. <laughs> I don't know about smart, but... Well, he's got his challenge right here. Uh, you know, Scott is uh, giving him everything he can handle. So it's two games apiece. And... Um, you know, I didn't. I didn't get the chance to see that first game, but uh, shoot, seven, it was, six, seven, six, it was seven, not six. very. Uh, it, w it wasn't very eventful. These, no. Okay. These games, Scott won, and he won handedly, and it wasn't very eventful. And yeah, Speck I think was, I think I Scott. Was, it was, it was like seven one against Speck. Speck. Like Scott's here <laughs> to. Scott is here to play, and Speck was like, "Oh goodness, I probably should fo focus and pay attention here." I don't know. It seems like Spec is underestimating Scott a lot right now. But. I don't know. Scott's not a bad player. He did put up. Every game I lost, it was 7 6. But he. He put up a good fight when I. 
in all all of our challenge matches. Yeah. So. I mean, Scott has potential. Um, you know, I think one thing he's got to realize is, you know, to again let he he's got to control. Um, you know, the pace of his set. He's got to control the pace of a match. Um, you know, I, I, a lot of things what I see from him is he kind of gets carried away and, and you know, kind of like this, this, the pace, the current pace, and he lets that dictate as to what shot he's going to hit. You know, mm -hmm. so the drift should never dictate your shot. You should drift it where you want it to hit the shot you want to hit. So, you know, if, if the drift is always dictating your shot, then you're never really going to truly implement a, a strategy, right? It's really just going to be reactive, and you're just going to react every time you're on offense versus, you know, when you're actually putting it in a specific spot to take advantage of the, what the defense is, is giving you. And I think that's really, you know, the difference. And, and that's, I think that's the next step for Scott is to kind of have that realization oh, of no. uh, something going on. There, everybody's looking at that Sam shaved his man bun. Oh, I don't know what they're talking about. I have a hat on. They saw it. <laughs> they saw you got no, a haircut. They, they saw you got a haircut, man. It's too I realized it. I realized if I didn't hide it, that's why I reached for my hat just now. Wait, but wait I guess I was a little too hairstyle. late. Here we go. Speck's gotten serious. He got his headband on. So now we'll see what happens. Scott got first possession. That's another point. And first blood. Good block. Nice. Good cross. For some points too. So, Danny, what are your thoughts? I've noticed every time I play Scott, whenever he pulls the puck out of the goal, whatever hand he's using on the mallet, his opposite hand is always on the center of the goal. And I found, I don't know if that's like a big deal or not, but I find it a little weird. But yeah, because so, I'm so used to everybody putting it on this on the side of the table, it's just a little different. What? what are you talking about? Once okay, next time, I'll watch Scott gets scored. Scott gets scored on. Watch where his um, the hand that's not on the mallet goes after he puts it in play. It's almost every that's time. Kind of his, what he what he's doing in order to try to be somewhat deceptive as nice to what sport. hand he's going to use next, right? Mm -hmm. See right there. Yeah, so he has to kind of put them together in order to do the mallet exchange. Yeah. So let's see what he does here. So maybe that's what he kind of does. Um, oh, he didn't. Yeah, he didn't do it but, there. But... And then he goes right there. When he goes to the opposite side, he tends to move it, it looks like. Maybe it's something ritualist, ritualistic or something. Mm -hmm. Part of his setup. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that might be something only Scott can really tell us. But, um, you know, I, I'm not a big fan of switching hands. Uh, I, back and forth. I'm in the I, same I, boat, but. Yeah, I, I think it takes away a little bit from the other hand in all reality. So, yeah, I, I'm all for, like, giving a different look and, and, and keeping it fresh and keeping the defense off balance, right? But I'm not for doing it at, at the expense of your attack. Yeah. And I think he does it, and a lot of it is the expense of his attack. So, like, so you see that right there. His hand is really looking for a spot, right, to to, to actually kind of help mm -hmm. him with his foundation. That was a triple bank, by the way. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it was. Gone. It was an insane shot. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe if somebody would press the replay I button, know. we'd <laughs> get to see it. But I know I'm terrible. So, um, okay. Like I said, he, he, and I don't know if it's you know if he's good, or good or you know or worse or better at it than you know with his right hand versus left hand or anything along. I line. think he's a better player with his left hand. Just like me playing against him, I yeah. think he he his left handed 
a left-handed play is a lot better. Yeah. He was yeah, exclusively so I, right-handed, and then he felt that his right hand was being injured by playing, so he gave it a rest and started playing exclusively left-handed. And then he discovered that he had dis he had uh, developed this ambidextrous um, play style that he could play with both right. hands, and so he developed this uh, offense defense type of play style that worked versus uh, right. some of the player base and it, here and it looks cool right i mean it looks cool it's, well it's i love to see but, i love to play against it yeah. it's great it's great for me yeah I, I just think again for what you're trying to do offensively like especially at the highest levels you know i mean it's so important i can't tell you how important it is you know to make it all look the same but have different shots come out of it you know it's so critical. I mean, if you watch, go go watch a video, you know, of a Billy Stubbs, um, and it's it's almost like here comes the exact same drift, and he's hitting four or five shots out of that one spot. Timing is all the same as as you know. Spec takes that game seven to two. Ooh, commanding. Um, yeah, very very strong there. Now he's up three two. Um, but but you watch like a Billy Stubbs attack. And, you know, like I said, we call him the machine for a reason. Uh, you know, go back, look at, uh, you know, our, our younger guys, you know, Jacob Weissman, uh, Jacob Munoz. I mean, they're not switching hands. They're, they're kind of giving you the same look over and over, but giving you mm -hmm. different shots. Right? Yeah. So in doing that, they are forcing their will upon you and making you do something different defensively. I mean, you don't want to get to the point where... I'm playing defense, and all I got to do in order to really shut this guy down is kind of get a feel for what his shots are going to be. I mean, it's it's not a good indicator that spec that they don't play that much, and spec's able to kind of charge and shut down a lot of Scott's shots just by charging the lanes like he's doing. You know that that should be something that Scott should be able to take advantage of. Um, you know, if, if somebody's charging me left and right. Man, that that's that's like a field day, right? You're just giving giving away free points, um, and at the highest levels, like I said, uh, it, it's you you want it to all look the same, where they have no idea it's going to be a straight, whether it's going to be a cross mm -hmm. cut, a power straight, a left wall, under or over, or right wall under and over, right? Right. So right, right. they don't know what release is going to happen, all those kind of things, and uh, of course the speed of shot, all of that has an effect. Um, but by by doing that and creating that, here comes my power shot. You better do something about it or it's going to go in. And then they throw those, you know, kind of the other shots that are to keep you honest. Um, you know, that that's the elite offense, right? I mean, like I said, I think for and, – and, and I'm not saying that Scott can't develop into that because he can. I mean, you know, I, I'm a believer that anything can happen on the table when it comes to – you know, the sport. I mean, we're still, you know, 50 years into the sport. So when you compare mm -hmm. that to like, you know, a lot of these other sports, I mean, we're still in our, you know, our, our, our early years, right? So I think, keep going. I don't, I'm not trying to cut yeah, you well, off. That's right. Yeah. So, so like I said, I mean, Scott's, Scott could certainly, uh, you know, bring something a little different, but I think that he should really master one before trying to master both simultaneously. And, and he's and far that's what I was, doing. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. I think he needs to focus on one, whether that's his left hand or his right hand, whatever he wants to do. I think he needs to focus on one and just get his shots figured out there. And I think his, I think his biggest problem isn't his offense. I think it's his defense because his defense moves way too much. Yeah, I mean, but. he definitely struggles defensively. Um, I mean, but I mean, let's be honest. A lot of a lot of guys do. I mean, mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah, it, it's not. Uh, um, defense is something that it just takes years and experience, you know, to to be able to to, to have that kind of discipline um, and to really understand the the ebbs and flows of, of, of the game, right? Um, it. Sorry. It's, no, no, that's right. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm not trying to be be like, hey, Scott. Worst, Scott's biggest problem is defense. He needs blah blah blah. I suck at defense. I know, I know that's my biggest problem as well. 
but um you danny you know it's he moves he pulls back too far and i had that biggest problem until i went to texas a couple of weeks ago and um andrew flanagan during the weeklies he told me you're staying over there and every time you're not allowed to pull back you only move side to side to block this cut and he did that to me for probably about an hour and a half i think Mm -hmm. and just wasn't allowed to move back and it takes a lot and i still move back i still have the problem yeah yeah it's the hardest part about air hockey is i think is the um is defense yeah no doubts um and 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 trust me you're when you go to chicago the same thing is going to happen i mean <laughs> just just when you think you got it uh you're going to get to see an offense like a billy Stubbs, you know a, a Q, you know, Brian Casada and Dan Myers, and, um, I, you know, Robert Kennedy, all those guys, and, you know, Matt Lemoyne. I mean, those guys, uh, they got game, man. They, they're good. Mm-hmm. And, um, like I said, I, I can't stress enough, like, you know, watching. Uh, uh, Dang, you know, nice, nice, nice shot. Was that a yeah. was it a cut or a cross? What hand like, was it with? Uh, Left. It like, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh-oh. Expect answers replay and a right replay. Things, I broke it. I'm excited to one. I'm really excited to play B- Billy Stubbs because I haven't played Billy Stubbs yet, and I'm really excited to play Q. Mm-hmm. I've played um, at the last Worlds. I played a decent amount with uh, Dan Meyer, and obviously he he whooped my butt. <laughs> he, yeah, yeah. he he showed me my place, and I played a little bit with Rob Kennedy and a little bit with Justin Flores. A bunch of people I'm really excited to go play with. Yeah, I, I keep forgetting Justin's over there now. Justin's a really awesome I know. player. Uh, great guy, too, by the way. So, you know, really nice Sick. guy. Do anything for you. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and he'll show you. He'll teach you a lot. I mean, he, he knows a tremendous amount of the game. Um, and still a student of the game. Sorry, guys. Um, you know. You're good. He, he still wants uh, – he – Still wants to, to, you know, still win that first elusive title. Um, he's in a great place uh, with those guys in Chicago now that uh, you know, he can he can do that. Uh, just gotta find that time and devotion that you know, it takes because it's, it's a lot. It's a lot of time. I'm already. Um, I'm trying to figure out we're my at, first. Five, I'm trying to five, plan guys, my first five, trip. Five. five all. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was a really good sh- shot hit by Speck there. Um, you know, it took his time. Oh, oh wow. That was a good sportsmanship on Speck, though. Yeah. Was it or was it an accident? <laughs> no, it, I, I know Speck. I know he bumped that back. Dang. Oh, yeah. Good straight. Nice cut. Nice cut. All right. Don't move. Big points here. Uh-oh. That was a that was good a big block. Oh, it could have Get, but stay you, you look where, look where nice Speck's grab. Playing defense, though, he's literally charging those lanes. Oh because, no! Oh man! He, and I can't tell you how that, how often that happened. Like he's charged the lanes, and it throws somebody's offense completely off, and they make a mistake. Like, yeah. Uh, there you go. Made the, made the final final over. Yeah, three games apiece. Courtesy of ruthless real estate. Mm-hmm. Uh, over. Speck walks away with a super sad face. Yeah. Well, it looks like he's smiling a little bit there. Well, right there. But you didn't see it as he was walking away from the table with a super sad face. Like the gravity of the planet was on his shoulders. And he just was like, No. Super sad How can I lose? How is this possible? Yeah, well, um, again, you know, I don't think... uh, Man, it's hard to say who really has the momentum here. Um, I, I would say I I'd probably favor Spec a little bit, but uh, Scott really started pouring it on. I think towards the end there. So, I think that uh, with that that win right there, it might have might have pushed the um, the pendulum. I'm blanking on that word. The momentum, the momentum in the yeah, the momentum area. into Scott's corner, and yeah. I think if Scott can keep smacking that right wall over and that cross i think he he definitely has a chance definitely has a chance yeah yeah it, but, it's gonna be tough um again it, it's if you look at, at what spec's been doing to really frustrate him 
you know, he's charging those lanes, right? Yeah, so he's shutting all those lanes down. Center, he's just coming out because he he doesn't fear, you know, a really good strong under from Scott on either in either quadrant because you know if he's playing righty and he's right of center he's hitting that right bank if he's playing lefty and he's left of center he's hitting a left bank mm -hmm. um so it's kind of telegraphed um and it, the ones that are going in are an absolutely perfect shot or you know it, it may flub in or something so the big face off right here Right. Another face-off one by Spec there. I found that if you just flick it right into Spec's mallet, it just comes right back to you, and then you just win the face-off. You know, I should have asked you about that because I, I mentioned that um, while you were playing, Matt, that uh, you you pretty much dominated the face-offs tonight. You did very well on those, very well. Yeah, that's that's called the French Open when you kind of you know kind of just allow them to to either hit it into your mallet. Um, I, I forget what it's called when you, you tap it really quick to get it back to yours um, and bounce it off their mallet. Uh, I'd have to refer, uh, you know, let Tim tell me what that one is. I can't remember what it was. Yeah. The um, winner of this game will uh, be the winner of the first set, Crystal. <laughs> yes. I tend to, up against Scott, I tend to use a lot of that French open or I just allow him to smack it. And I tried, I tried doing a lot of the French Open against Nathan in the finals match, and well, we can see how it how it worked out for me. I'm number two. I'm not number one, yeah. but I don't know. it just depends on who you're playing. That those openings. Yeah. Ooh, so, so beautiful, right beautiful yeah. stop. Yeah, that was a good block. Oh. Around his mallet, yeah, and then it goes. It. Yeah. Yeah, Sam, from what I can recall, that I mean, it was a, it was a close match. And uh, that match you had with Nathan, I mean, it was within reach, man. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's just uh, little little things. And uh, mm -hmm. sometimes that makes the biggest difference. So. I think um, the biggest thing was just experience. I think Nathan's been playing it like two more years than I am. I have, and that was my first finals I've ever been in. And um, that final set, I just it was I it was four zero final set. He just rolled rolled over me, but I can't be upset. Like yeah, trust me, I I lost. I was super super upset. I really wanted the win, but I learned a lot, and it was a great game. So if you learned a lot, then you didn't necessarily lose. Yep. I lost the rank, but I didn't technically lose. Yeah. All right. Spec with a 2 1 lead. Too crazy yeah. shot. Too much power. Yeah. Spec's got to get that under control just a little bit more. I see when he misses, it just goes crazy. Yeah. See if you were if you were in spec shoes right now, Danny. What would what would be your game plan right now in this game? If I was on the other side right now from Scott, I don't know if I would even hit a bank. I I, I probably would hit about uh, six cross straights and one all speed power straight. Okay. To be quite honest. Okay. And then why is that? Because he's pulling back every time. Every time. Spec is. Scott. I mean, Scott, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, because Scott's pulling back every time. He, yeah. And he, he doesn't, he, he would have to prove to me that. Beautiful over. That, mm, yeah. yeah, that was a good shot. He'd have to prove to me that, that he has discipline to stay out there and actually take away the straights before I even bother yeah. hitting a bank. And it, I know it kills him inside because he knows he does it every time. And it, he knows he knows mm -hmm. he's not supposed to, supposed to do that. Oh wow, yeah. that was a nice... It's a it's a super hard habit to break. It's yeah, it is wasn't it easy. Is. There's no doubt. So. And you know, and when I was young, I, I trust me, I it's not like I just woke up in the morning and I had this discipline or anything. This stuff that you develop over years of playing and um, I mean 
you know, I can't say it enough. I mean, my, my first time I ever found out what a cross straight was, ooh, that was a big error there. All right, this is a, some big points here, guys. Yeah. Crystal, pulling back oh, means going, point. bringing your mallet all the way back to the goal when defending. Yeah, when you when you pull back against the goal, you're actually opening up two big holes on either side. Ooh. That was a good little transition there, left ball over. And set that point was a for Scott. Beautiful shot. Yeah, but you open up two big holes on either side of the goal, which kind of basically forfeits the point. Oh, and mm -hmm. then nice. All right. Scott Scott's takes the first set. first set. Final shot. Dang. Great. Scott good job on Scott. Over. Good job on Scott. Oh, no, that yep. was under, wasn't it? Yep, that was an under. Love fall under. Maybe uh, spec expecting the over, but gets undered instead. You know, and, and, and Scott hit that one well. You know, he, he came up, he kind of uh, showed a, a little delayed release, did a little, like, pump action, and then uh, let it rip. And, uh, you know, it was just enough to, um, you know, give by Spec's defense. Uh, spec was... I think he was in limbo a little bit, you know, not sure which, you know, if it was going to be an over or under, but uh, he also, you know, was frozen just enough um, because it wasn't the most accurate left wander, but it was, it was, they don't have to be when, when you, when you freeze somebody enough, that, that's really, you know, the whole point of it. Um, and then, uh, you know, obviously he executed the shot and took the first set. So. So yeah. All right, I guess we're gonna have Spec on here in just a second. We gotta give Spec some. I see advice. Spec's eyes are already welling up with tears. <laughs> I'm gonna cry all about his first set to y'all. Hey man, Scott's Spec? been doing great. What happened? What's going on, Spec? Talk to us here. Oh, man. I, you know, I'm not really good against people who turtle a lot. As you know, Scott just so it's been back. working to Scott's benefit that he's All doing. Right. That. We're talking about how <laughs> I, it's terrible. He's I know doing I, I need to hit my straight shots, but I'm not hitting my straight shots for some reason. Okay, okay. So I've been trying to hit that I, cross. I, I, for all a, of a sudden, right? All of a sudden, all of a sudden. Yeah. So something like that, I, I would just. I'm gonna get him. Why don't you just ignore like <laughs> what he's doing and actually just just work on hitting the shot just kind of ignore the fact he's even over there you know that he's pulling back right in the middle mm -hmm. so don't yeah think about i'm, try it. Just I'm, I'm trying it. really hard to hit that cut and cross it's just not yeah. working out <laughs> yeah because you know um you know sam was asking me what i would do if i was playing you know scott and i just was saying i'd probably i don't think i would have hit a bank this entire time Mm -hmm. I would have hit probably about six cross straights and one off-speed power straight. Well, the the reason I do like a pump fake is so he's like, he resets and goes back up and then I can hit that bank shot. Yeah. Because he does go up and down a lot, like further up and... Yes. And that's how... Try some yeah. pump fakes. Try some pump fakes on your on your cuts or your crosses. Because I, I, at least what I noticed, most of those pump fakes that you did, every time you did a pump fake, you'd immediately go to a right wall under. Mm-hmm. So yeah. try out try it with a with a cut or a cross, okay? Because Danny, yeah, it's Danny. Danny's gonna be right. It's yeah. that the know, straight shots are wide right. open. Yeah, I, wide I, open. I, I know they are like the biggest target for me to hit, but I'm keep I keep missing them. Yeah, look, I mean, the the, the, the most important thing is for you you know not to lose that um, composure, right, when you're mm -hmm. on offense. And you've done a pretty good job, I mean, of, of taking your time, making good shots, right? But every now and then, I think you are still playing maybe a little too fast. And maybe it's, again, that adjustment, you know, with this new mallet. Mm -hmm. um, but but I think you, you keep pushing that, right? You keep um, trying to uh, make that happen. Uh, don't, don't change everything in the world, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, but... but but think about again, where am I hitting the shots from, right? So I'm seeing a lot of shots you're still hitting from the middle, the middle zone of the table. Um, so, you know, when you're, again, your higher success rate is when you're a little, you know, a little bit left of center. Um, yeah, I, I know I'm know, hitting but, from the middle. It, it, it's just cause it kind of gets into Scott's mind when it's straight down the middle. He just kind of like has a little hissy fit with it with his mallet so that's why i kind of yeah. just keep it in the middle and, and have a dead puck right there 
And then when he starts to get that pressure build up, I kind of hit a shot and hopes it makes it in. Like yeah. I can I can hit yeah, a cut and so the in the cross from there, but it's just okay. Well, so one thing that, to keep in mind too, like you know the movement of your arm on making a shot. So mm -hmm. yeah. I come up right, and then I'm behind the puck with my mallet. I come further back and then I make a shot. Watch how he reacts. You don't even have to. You can just hit it off the. Watch the second you pull back. Watch him go like this. Yeah. Pull back even more so, right? Mm -hmm. So here I am. I'm drifting. I come back real quick. Watch how he reacts. You can use that against him, right? Mm -hmm. So um, th those are things to. Uh, it, it it really just tests his discipline, and you know that's one thing. And, and Scott knows it. He he struggles with that. Um, it's just a matter, like I said, of you executing, um, you know, and uh, taking the next set because. I mean, you're right there. I mean, geez, what was it? Seven to five the last game or seven, was, seven uh, to five? Uh, yeah. Every yeah, jeez, um, that was that was close, man. Every every game was practically seven to six, except the one blowout that you beat them seven oh, yeah. to two. I think that was when I actually kept, got my shots in. Yeah. And I was yeah. really um, another thing I think you should do, Spec. I think you should swap to your back to your normal mallet. You're you're losing a lot of possessions with that mallet right now. I know you really want to use it. It's a dope mallet, but you're in a very hard spot I, right now. I mean, I would, I'd let go me, back let to your me, Let me button. learn. Hey, if I lose but my rank, also, let me it's just also learn. your game. Yeah, I mean, it's I would love to game. learn this mallet, and I'm and I'm so close to like nailing it down. I think if I just keep playing one more game, I can just get that <laughs> get this mallet down. Yeah. Because hey, it's hey, already hey. like super broken, broken in right now, and I, it's very, very smooth. Like, you should have came like you... on a Saturday <laughs> and play with it. Spec, I, I don't care if it's a paper mallet. The, right. the mallet doesn't mean anything. It's about you right now. So yeah, uh, you know, you, you can make it happen regardless like, of what. Yeah, you're I using. mean, you saw in that seven two, and I, I, I like dialed in and clocked in and. I hit all my shots. So, so you you just go make it happen. You know, don't mm -hmm. overthink it. Just just focus on each possession. Right. Right. Making the right shot. You already know what to do. Mm -hmm. um, you just have to have that discipline, both on offense and, and defense. To be quite honest, um, you know, and and you know, don't lose sight of what he's doing when he's on offense. Right. So, you know, one of the things that, uh, you know. I, I was pointing out is kind of how you're attacking the lanes that, you know, he's basically, you know, when he's over in the right quadrant, right. And he's, and he has, you know, he's playing righty. You literally are charging the rail. Cause it's like, he's going to hit a right bank every single time. <laughs> and it's the he's same thing with he's that. playing lefty and he, and he, you know, so I'm not sure why he hasn't realized that he's kind of showing that to the world. Um, so, anyways, just be mindful. He may be changing that after he talks to me. I don't know. He yeah. may, may not. He may, he no, may that, say, Danny, that, that's I, been part I just of his game for yeah. Just, that's just, that's yeah, been he, part of his game for so long. I don't think he'll knock out of it. Yeah, yeah. He, he may tell me you don't know what the heck you're talking about. I already <laughs> want to post that. So, you know, but but again, just look. Um, you know, take take your time. Again, challenge yourself to be smart offensively and be disciplined and set it up right take your time on those shots and make a good solid shot right nothing nothing too soft nothing too hard um just a good shot be ready for the rebound be ready for a charge be ready for whatever it may be just be ready to mm -hmm. catch that puck again no matter what happens right mm -hmm. so yeah but, but just play hard man don't don't overthink it you'll do good play hard and have fun if you're playing air yeah. hockey have fun that's all that matters What's up, dude, Leas? Right. How are you guys doing? What's good. up, Scott? How you doing there? Good, man. Good. It's going good so far. So, so far, so good. Yeah. You, you won the first set. It was a hard-fought uh, first set. Great job. Thank you. I, I missed the first game, but, uh, uh, you know, I, I heard you, you won it pretty handily there. I think 7-5 to five the first game there. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, geez, every other game minus the one was 7-6, to six, which is... Very close. You know, you can't get much more competitive than that. So that's awesome. Yep. Yeah. So what, what are your feelings? Uh, what's going on? You know, how did you take that first set? 
Pretty good. I think actually the new mallet is interesting because it uh, it bounces back a lot easier. So it's a little bit easier to keep possession because of it. I noticed slightly if it, you know if it bounces off it. So that's part of it. Part of it's probably because he's testing this mallet out and it's a new mallet. He might be a little exhausted from Matt's match. So I'm taking full advantage of that as much as I can. And just, yeah, keeping myself focused on the reliable yeah. shots and all that jazz, yeah. Yeah, no doubts. Um, you know, and, and, and those are all valid points. I mean, when Matt played, uh, you know, spec the last match, uh, he saw more success when he just hit more straights. And, uh, you know, even when Spec was blocking them, they were coming back to him. So he had more possession time. Yep. Right. Um, you know, one thing I'll, 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 I'll tell you is just make sure that, you know, you don't get to the point where it's so easy for him to kind of tell what shot's coming next. Exactly. Right. That's my biggest where challenge. You're not as readable. So you, right. you have a really strong tendency if you're playing righty and that puck is going to the right part of your the zone yep. that you're banking it. Right. off the right rail mm -hmm. like it's a very large percentage yep <laughs> and the exact same thing is true if you're playing lefty and going on so so what is he doing defensively he's actually coming out and charging the rail uh you know and, and taking away a lot of your shots and a lot of your attack you'd have right. a lot more success you know if if you took that away okay it, does that make sense mm -hmm. yep i will so do my just best. one yes. thing uh, yeah, be, be mindful of because, um, you know, he, uh, Spec picked up on that really quick. Because um, mm -hmm. I, I guess you guys haven't played that much in the past. Is that correct? We actually have played a decent amount. We actually play okay. quite fairly often at the arcade on Fridays when, like, nobody else is okay. there. It's just me and him a lot. So I have actually had quite a lot of off to the side practice with Spec, and that helps quite a bit, actually, a lot. Okay. Yep. Okay. All right. Cool. Well, then, then he he already knew that then about you then. So, yep. so he kind of <laughs> exactly. already has the report then. Okay. Right. Yeah. Well, good deal, man. Um, you know, like always, you know, you don't need to overthink anything. Uh, shoot, right. keep attacking. You know, obviously, you want to probably get it to the point where every game's not so close, but uh, you, you know, stay on the attack. Mm -hmm. Um, don't let him get comfortable. Yeah. Uh, you know, I do like the energy you're bringing on the table. I think that's important when you're playing spec. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, but just keep it up. Get some really, you're hitting some really good overs on both sides. Um, you know, try to mix in a few more straights. I always say that, no matter who who, who I'm trying to coach or anything along those lines. Right. <laughs> um, it's just a more efficient shot that uh, will help you get that puck back more often. Cool. Awesome, man. I appreciate it. All right, guys. No problem. Well, I hey. look like. Uh, I guess okay. Well, yep. Yeah. We're ready good to luck. rock. Thanks, man. All right, good, good luck. luck. So my biggest question for you, Danny. Yes, sir. What are your opinions on um, what what are they calling it? Mallet X? Specs yeah, doing mallet. The mallet? I mean, I don't know. I mean, it, it's uh, – I, I think it's a good thing that um, we're trying to think outside the box mm -hmm. and, and kind of experiment with – with new materials, um, namely because who knows how long, you know, that this, the mallet that we know so well is, is going to be gone. You know, I mean, yeah, we have no idea. Um, you know, if, if there's a shortage of material or something along those lines, I mean, all of those, um, factors can come into play and we, we don't want to, as a sport, be so reliant on just one thing. Yeah. Like, okay, hey, this mount goes away and now we, we can't have a sport anymore. Um, that would be pretty pretty ridiculous. Uh, so so those are really my feelings on it. Um, as for this particular one, to me it kind of has a lot of similarities as a uh, as they're about to face off here. But it, a lot of similarities is like the old hard low top, um, which was known for a lot of offense, but very, you know, not as much... Uh, uh, low top, or I'm sorry, not as much defense, because again, it had so much pop off of that puck, or off the mm -hmm. mallet rather, that um, it was hard to control it. Okay. Because, um, like my opinion, not opinion, but what I see is I kind of see the same thing. I never got to see the old low top mallet, but it seems very, very offensive based. Yeah. And super lacking in the defensive side. Um, but I think it's super cool how spec 
invested this all this money into this. Sure. And doesn't even know how it's going to turn out, and that's taking a step in the right direction for the school. Nice trying to innovative. Things, trying, trying to be to innovative. Find new... Yeah, that's yeah. the I yeah. couldn't think of the word. Yeah. Trying to yeah, yeah. trying to find that's that next good. next step for this sport, and I think that's super cool. <laughs> I'm looking for the next step past. What's that? Not losing? I can't tell, dude. Why you gotta be? <laughs> why you gotta be mean, dude? You gotta take it to a mean place. Oh goodness, <laughs> hurt my feelings. It's all. all I guess. As, I guess that's why I get for bringing uh, feelings to the chat. Anyways, that was a good little uh, catch there um, by Spec. You know, again, he's charging that lane as you Ooh. see it. He just did it again. He just shut that down. No chance. That can, yeah, it, it's Scott has got to figure that piece out um, because Spec starts getting a consistent offense. Um, you know, that's it's 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 going to really start showing in in you know Scott's. Uh, well, his lack of discipline on defense, essentially. I mean, that'll how start coming has, to light. How long has Scott been playing, Matt? Do you know? It's been like six months, right? Six months? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's playing great for just mm -hmm. six months. And yeah, he has so that there, again, background of all the, the martial arts, so he mm -hmm. can learn. He knows how to learn, how to be disciplined, how to teach himself how to do you know certain movements and teach himself certain skills to be repetitive and be successful yeah so <clears throat> Ooh. Oh, another good shot there so again anytime you know that spec kind of oh man he's really taking that away I mean Scott has really got to change up where he's hitting that puck from and he's he's kind of going back to it there he goes that's what he's got to do more of you know right close to the corners and everything is either going to be a straight or, or bank to that side is, is not working for him and he is he is aware of that straight yeah. exploit for in, into the the mallet and getting back possession if it hits his mallet. Yeah. Um, but whether he uses that to his advantage or not, it still remains to be seen. Right. Yeah, I mean that was another another one right there, and and it's it's getting to the point if 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 that can stay that way that he'll just be giving up possessions uh, to spec if if it continues, but. You know, it, it, you can't judge it on one game. I mean, uh, he lost one game last set, seven to two, and ended up winning the set. So, yep. um, that was a nice cross, a lefty cross. So now I'm seeing, you know, when he's playing lefty and he's over in the right quadrant, he, he's he's been effective. If he's playing righty and he's over in the left quadrant, he's f effective. It's when he's lefty and in the left quadrant, he's not effective. Or if he's righty and then right quadrant, he's not effective. So, so uh, Spec took game one here, seven to four. The replay buttons look like it's messing up. Oh, <laughs> Did something happen? So let, let's see here. Uh, I guess there's a question here. How can someone defend against that straight shot? So, you know, Sam, why don't you answer this? Let's hear what Sam has oh, to say. Oh, indeed. I know what to do, but uh, Sam I know what to do. Doesn't know what to do. Whether he does it or not, that's a little different. Mentally, I know what to do. Physically, okay. my body doesn't 100% think about it. I'm going to have better luck with a mallet than I have. I don't. Okay. So, um, what I always tell new players is I try to, when you're first starting out, I try to tell them to put their defense, put their the butt end of the mallet at that first screw set and try to just try your best to stay there. Um, and you want to come down at, in a try and like a sideways motion, what's called triangle defense 
to block the um, the banks. But for a straight so shot, you don't want to pull back. You want to move sideways. You just want to move a tiny bit to the left to stop across, or to stop it on this side and a tiny bit to the left. To, I don't. I can't think of the areas of the shot while I'm trying to explain it, but you don't want to pull all the way back for a straight shot. You want to move just a side side bit to the left, just a tiny tiny bit to the right. Wow. And it's a lot a lot easier said than done. Right. But I think I'm correct. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're, you're, you're not too bad there, Sam. So I'll say this to anybody out there: like, if you want to be a student of the game, teach it. Teach it to somebody. Um, you will find out. You know, you will really master a subject when you try to teach that subject in anything in life. Uh, that's a good little left wall under there uh, by Scott. But yeah, you'll master it so much more when you actually try to teach it um, because you're going to get all sorts of questions and you have to answer all that. So, you know, the whole reason that we stay out on defense is to take away the angle of the straight shot. No different than like what a soccer goalie does in a one on one situation, like on a breakaway with a forward. So what does the soccer goalie do? He doesn't stay back by the goal. He actually runs towards that forward. And the reason is because if he stays there against the goal, that, oh, nice beautiful, reaction. Beautiful. Like, like, yeah. Starting to look a little there, bit like me there, Spick. <laughs> if he stays there by the goal, so much space for that forward to hit, you know, to kick that ball. If he charges towards... Um, if he charges towards the forward, he now takes away the angle at which either of those straight shots will go in. So he's by him moving up forward, he's attacking like that peak. So here, here's the, the, the forward up here, and he can either hit this way or he can hit this way. So either way, but by the, the, the goalie running up towards it, he's taking away both those angles the closer he gets to the forward. To prevent we need sport. a whiteboard. Yes, that's what we yes. need. A, a whiteboard would make it so much easier instead of yeah. trying to use our fingers. A teleprompter will certainly work. Um, I know Centerline has some great graphics. Uh, if you want to look up some some video on how to defend. Um, oh, wow, that was a huge very game. quick seven one game. Speaking of the Centerline, I got my beautiful Centerline hat on right now. There you go. Heck yeah. I got, I I would have I would be wearing my jacket, but my, I already packed my uh, I got the bomber jacket, and I just nice. packed it away in a box today. And I'm a little upset now. But, yeah, it's it's not uh, it's not quite summertime up there. You need to hold on to that jacket. So. Um, it's 56 degrees right now. Right now, it's pretty nice outside. Yeah, that's it's pretty nice all day. <laughs> no, I, I was I was wearing a t-shirt all day today. Yeah, all day today. What about next week when all it's day. like 32 degrees all day? Um, then you'll be sad. I got yeah. my sweatshirt. I got sweatshirt. But you don't have your so, center so line anyways, jacket. That's so true. blocking that straight and being further out from the goal is all about taking away that that straight shot. So hopefully that, that kind of answers it uh, for you there, Crystal. Um, you know, and, and it kind of opens up like once you get that – one little concept uh it opens up a whole array of different strategies um and, and the, the reason we drift the puck um and and what that does to a defense um and creates kind of a a situation you know where the defense has to respond or react a certain way um and, and it just goes from there um the beautiful thing about you know the sport is um, it's it's a simple simple concept that can turn out to be super complex. You know, it's it it, it it's it, it can it can be a, a complex game of rock paper scissors. You know, am I going to stay out for the straights or am I going to go back for the banks? Right. So um, is it going to be a, a right wall under? Is it going to be a right wall over? Um, is it going to be that cut straight or a cross straight? Um, so all those little things um, have an effect. Um, you know, speeds of the of the shot and, and, and all of that. So hopefully that 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 works. So yeah, I, 
Oh, nice, nice uh, cross there, hit by Scott. Yeah, I don't know if it's necessarily a timing thing. I think it's more of a position and discipline thing. Um, you know, the timing thing is more for like the offense trying to time it, but I think if defense you're trying to time to defend, I, I think that's not necessarily a great strategy. Uh, but I'm not saying it can't work. Timing a charge is an art. I'll, I'll say that. Yeah. There goes another nice cross by spec. I will say I don't use a lot of timing for for defense. Yeah. Ooh, wow, powerful right one under. Now three to two. All right. It seems like the yeah, dynamic so, has changed. Well, uh, first two games will definitely kind of show that. Um, yeah, seven hey, to four, you, seven to one. That's pretty huge. If you go it's, back and look at my 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 match against Scott, my first two games against in the set weren't very good, but I came out at the end of the set, of each set. So you never know what can happen. Still a lot of air ho hockey left. Absolutely. All right. Ooh, mm -hmm. Unfortunate hate error to see there. Those. Yeah. Nice recovery by Spec. Yeah, that's well well defended there. Turns uh, it into a goal. Yep. And beautiful, notice, beautiful grab. Yeah, if, if you notice these, these games that you know, it, it, Spec has really dummied down the offense and all, and that's really what's more effective when and when I say results <coughs> error there. Um, when I say dummy down, it, it's not that it's stupid or anything along those lines. It's really you're just keeping it simple. Um, you know, when, when you keep it simple, uh, you know, you, you can be a lot more accurate. You're not making it over complex. Um, you know, you're actually really testing the, uh, you know, the discipline uh, of your opponent. And I think in this case, it's kind of showing the lack of discipline, you know, that Scott had, which has kind of been a known problem that he knows um, about. And uh, these are the kind of things that it's a growing moment for, for both players involved. Um, you know, for Spec, for Spec um, you know, he can realize, oh, wow, you know, I don't have to have this ridiculous complex offense. It can be something very basic and I can be very effective, right? And then, you know, for Scott, it's it's more of a, okay, yes, I, I can't get away with that for a length of time or too long of kind of being erratic defensively and kind of going all over the place. I've got to create a, a good, solid foundation defensively. At least, hopefully, that's how he responds and how he, you know, what he what he learns from this. Um, but but like I said, it, you can't I can't stress that enough. I mean, uh, both, no matter what you do in air hockey, you know, offense or defense. Uh, your foundation is so key to have a strong foundation as to like, you know, what you're doing um, on the table, what you're trying to do on the table. And of course, you know, having the puck control to actually manage what you're doing. On the table. Right. <clears throat> Here we go. Game four, set two. All right. Scott gets first possession. Oh, and gets a strong nice first overall. blood. Yep, hit that right quadrant from the right hand. Is a, again, it's a right bank, but again, it has to be so perfect for it to go in. So back in it up with that one. It was good hustle by Scott, though. Oh. Is it just me or is Spec getting more control of his mallet as the games go on? Yeah, I, I think he slowed it down a little bit and that he realized he didn't have to, you know, 
play fast. You know, I, I think that's the difference. So I, I think, uh, and, and oh, again, it's a, it's a good lesson for, for everyone. You know, mm -hmm. it, it, you don't have to play super, super fast. You just need to play controlled and, and, and hit the shots, you know, that you want to hit based on the opponent you're playing. Now, mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's obviously the other extreme, right? So like you play super, super fast and it affects somebody where they can't respond or react quick enough. You know, maybe you're playing some old geezer like myself, right? That can't see that fast stuff anymore. So that's good. That's a good strategy to have. But, but I'd say, you know, for especially the younger generation, I mean, playing slow is, is something you, you definitely want to learn how to do. See, um, I try to, my main attack, I feel like is a slow attack. It's just mm -hmm. slow, slow setup with the right wall under, uh, and a cut, cut attack. But dang, I have, I find it a lot more fun playing fast. Yeah, I know it's not my best best part, but I have a lot more fun playing fast. Yeah. But if I need yeah. to get, I need, if I know I got to get serious and I need to win this game or win this set or win this match, I go well, back to my basics, go back to my slow. So, so the better way to think about that, Sam, is it's not the speed is as much as it is the efficiency, mm -hmm. right? So depending on your opponent, that can be completely different. So I might be super efficient, <laughs> you know, against one particular player playing super fast versus another player that's playing. If I try to play super fast against Colin, you know, all I'm doing is just giving him the puck, right? Yep. So of course, if I play super slow against him, I kind of do that too, but that's beside, that's beside the point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's Colin. <laughs> All right, all right. We got us a, 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 a good game right here, though. It's tied four to four. Yeah. Ooh, nice little transition there. Who, who's slinky gaming? No. That's Andy a Andrew Sneed, right? Yep. Okay. I believe yeah. so. He you can beat you using only three fingers. I could, I could beat Andy using my left foot with my eyes closed. <laughs> Well, I, I was just hanging. He, I, I was just hanging out with Andy the other day, <laughs> talking smack. I think you typically use just three fingers. I know Colin sometimes uses two, and some of, you know some of these guys use just two fingers. I think One he only has shot. three fingers. So who's that, Colin? No. No, no, nubs. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, he's. We call him nubs for a reason. Gotcha, gotcha. He's a good they, guy. When. We'll be talking about nubs, and just, it sounds like they're saying Billy Stubbs. I'm like, Billy, du Billy Stubbs was down here the other day? What? I didn't know about that. I would have come. But... He plays just like Billy Stubbs, too. Oh, really? Ooh, nice cross there. All right. Scott is making this a set now. Quick, Andy, yeah, learn, yeah, learn how to play Stubbs plays and learn how to play exactly yeah. like him. Yeah, so that that that's what Scott needs to do. A lot more of that, you know. So, um, I saw a lot more control, more decisive type shots from him that game. Um, you know, we'll have to see if uh, <clears throat> we'll have to see if he can maintain this level. If he can and, maintain uh, it, he only needs to do it three more times. That is correct. That yep. is correct. Only yep, he needs to do it three times this set, or he's got to do it another four times the next set if he can't uh, win the, these next three games. But uh, you know, down three games to one, uh, it's proven that you know he's proving it's hard. he's not out of it yet. Okay, you guys, I gotta get, I gotta wake up early for work tomorrow. All right, I'll talk sir. to y'all later. Best of luck right, to both the players. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't really have a favorite to win. Like maybe spec, but I, I like Airhawk. Hey Sam, I, I just want to tell you something before you leave. Nice haircut. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it looks a lot better slicked back. Trust me. But alrighty, you guys. You guys have a great night. Have a good night. Take care. Bye. All right, just us now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry for your luck, Daddy. <laughs>
yeah, so that was, uh, you know, I, I liked seeing that fight from Scott. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of players, they're down 3-0. Players will just pack it in and say, you know what, let me bring it for the, that next set. You know, we'll go for the final set and see what happens. Um, but I like that. I like the fight. Um, you know, don't don't give up because you never know what can happen. And it's so true. Um, you know, I've I've been a, a victim of, of people coming back on me being up 3-0 and, and all of a sudden they win 4-3 and vice versa. Uh, you know, anything can happen in this sport. And that's uh, why we that's what we play. Everything okay on the technical side of things? I think so. Okay. Yeah, just had to add more replays. So, um, Scott does have the warrior spirit, so we'll see what he does here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, as for, you know, Speck's point of view, I mean, he, he obviously wants to continue doing what he was doing those first three games, and he did a little bit this last game, um, you know, but again, just control that pace and just keep pounding in, you know, the straight shots with, with an occasional bank and just, uh, you know, not holding, you know, holding back on that, just letting them go, letting them, letting them flow. Um, you know, regardless of, of what the defense is doing, uh, knowing that he, you know, has that tendency for pulling back, um, you know, and, and Scott's got a, Again, prove that he does have the the discipline to stay out there and take that straight away. All right, another face off. Scott wins another again. Face off win by Scott. Yeah. Yeah. Immediately sent to the bottom of Scott's bowl. Yeah. And started off with two. So he really, I guess he's had three three shots. All from the, the one, you know, going to the same wall where, where he's at quadrant wise. So that, that's a big tendency that Scott has. He's got to overcome that somehow. That's a good block. Spec really taking to heart what you told him and pouring on the straights. Yeah. As he should. Well, it was very effective so far this set, so we'll see if uh, it continues to be that way. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it, I think the the key here for uh, you know Scott is is you know to keep attacking, keep you know setting spec off balance just a little bit, trying to you know out quick him to some degree because he is the quicker of the two players. But uh, you know where where he's struggling is he's he's very readable for 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 spec, mm -hmm. you know and. and with the way Spec is playing uh, defense right now, uh, you know my good friend Syed Rahman, uh, you know he he's really good at, at, at charging those those um, those lanes, and if he sees a player doing what Scott's doing, uh, Sai Sai's really good at uh, shoving that back down your goal. So that one was a little rushed there by Speck. The the Venezuelan defense where you hang back towards the back of the goal and come out mm -hmm. to charge, did that ever evolve into something different? Or did it always so, stay that way, kind of? Well, I don't really know if it, it evolved to something different or really who, who first started it. Um, 
I just know like, you know, when, when, when I was kind of exposed to it, it was, it was Jose Mora, right? Yeah. And Jose Mora, um, um, in 95, his first tournament, um, he finished fifth. And, um, so he came out of the gate just ridiculous, um, playing great, playing so fast and quick. Um, and for me, I never seen anything like it. So, um, so it was, it was, it was awesome to see. And, you know, what you don't realize when you're playing, uh, Jose is, yeah, he's back there against the goal, but he's, he's giving you the illusion that he's there open for the straight shots, but he's literally charging those lanes for the straights. And at the same time, whenever you bank, he charges kind of that lane for the bank shot. So that's why it's, it was, it was so difficult to, to score on him for, Ooh, man, this game's getting away here from spec, but it was really difficult to score on him because he, he was so good at charging those lanes that, uh, you know, you, you kind of felt like you just you just couldn't do it unless you were skilled enough where you you would hold on to you know delayed releases, um, made good strong efficient shots, changed up the speed, you know where where you basically had him guessing. And um, the one player that that was never really susceptible to that defense, and it makes perfect sense, is like Tim Weisman. So, uh, and Tim did lose to Jose one time um, in, in a world championship. And, and I think it was Jose's last one that he won in 2000 in Vegas. And, um, but it was, yeah, it was a, that was a good, strong game there by Scott. He's Scott takes games another away one away. From winning this match. Yeah. He just does that tw- two more times and he's got Specs world rank. He's got Specs state rank and he's got yep. a bunch of um, rating points on his side. Yeah. That's a good day's work. <laughs> very, very much so. And he's got an auto um, challenge for me. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, so so like I said, uh, Jose's um, attack and, and the way he, you know, his attacking defense uh, naturally just did not work against Tim because how Tim would go up there and hold that cut release and get you to want to charge and then bank around you. And um, he did it so well and so precise um, that he, he pretty much dominated Jose for the majority of, of career um, against each other, the head to head. But again, when it counted, um, when they met in that winner's bracket in Vegas, uh, Jose beat him. And um, now, you know, to be, to be fair, Tim did kind of hurt himself. He hurt his wrist in the match right before that playing, uh, playing Ehab Shukri. Uh, he hit a, a shot that uh, if it was 6-6, match point either way. And this shot somehow fluttered in the air, went literally over Ehab's mallet and fluttered back on the table and in the goal. Um, what? It was just one of the craziest things you'll ever see and witness. I see, we need a replay of that stuff. <laughs> Man, I wish we did, yeah. Um, anyways, but uh, but Tim wasn't able to make it back to Jose. Um uh, Tim lost to Pedro Otero, so it was three years in a row where Pedro and Jose Mora played in the finals, uh, where Jose won all three of those. Um, Pedro um, finished second three times in a row for that reason. So, uh, really, really awesome tournaments, all of those were. All right, Spec uh, won that face off. Let's see what we got here now. It's a huge game. Nice cross to open up the, set of the game. Spec changing up his headband. Maybe it's going to make a difference. <laughs> Heat retention. I don't know. Dissipation. Who knows? Who knows? If Scott can just focus on his fundamentals, he can win this. Yeah, I mean, you know, he's got to do, I think, a little bit more like, again, shots um, like that right there. So. He, he's, you know, with the lefty, you know, he's playing lefty. He goes over in the right quadrant and it's a cross straight. And that's that's it. He's got to do more of that. So, two to one now, spec. Wow. Oh. Just answers right back. Yep. Nice. 
Uh, right wall over. Ooh. One for, oh. This this looks like to be one of those games where nobody's going to block anything. They're just going to keep on welling at each other. So it, it's oh, yep. see <laughs> three I mean, to three. Uh oh, well, we got away from spec. Good block. Scott's showing some good control here. Good defense yeah. from spec. That was a good block. Good, good stop too. All right. Now we're getting into it. Yep. Oh, nice little transition cross. Caught uh, Scott off balance. Mm. Too much power. Yeah, a little too much there. Uh, ends up giving up possession. Let's see if Spec can take advantage of this and uh, see if he can make it a 5 3 game. And he, he does. Sure does. Yeah. So it looks like he's hitting that cross with kind of a cut release, um, which is a really good shot to, to have in your arsenal. That was a great block. Yeah. Good shot to... Speaking of cuts. Wow. Mm, good release on that. Six to four, set point four for spec. Mm. Oof, barely missed the rat wall over. Spec looking hyper focused. Yeah, yeah. Scott making a bunch of what sounds like cat noises. I can't be sure. <laughs> I have to take your word for that one. I don't I don't hear that. Got away from Scott there. Oh, almost Ooh. went in. Yeah. Huge possession here for Scott. He's getting them all back, though. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh. Oh, and then yep. Spec pulls it out the set and yeah. One stays set alive. Piece. Great release. See how he held that release there, and, you know, Scott knew it. He just couldn't help himself, but he pulled back, you know, and just opened up that lane for the cross straight. Yep. Um, it, this is what I'm talking about when, you know, I'm talking about discipline. You know, it's not that he's misbehaving. It's that he's pulling back. Um you know, so you got to have that discipline to stay out there and just be stubborn. You know, I'm not going to let that straight go in. Yeah. Um, because the result is when you pull back, you, you know, good players are going to are going to hit one side or the other. They're going to they're going to, you know, hit it with that power straight or cut straight or they're going to go to that cross. And here's <laughs> Scott so like said, hey. ready for some. knowledge to be dropped on him hey what's up danny all right so uh what, what scott yeah, that was a uh a little different set than what we saw the first time yep um you know it looked like uh i'll say spec you know came out on fire he did. on three games in a row mm -hmm. um and then you know what you for to me you matched his level in that yeah. fourth game and i was very impressed with that um you know, and I wasn't sure, to be honest, what was going to happen the rest of that set, mm -hmm. you know, because I felt like, okay, you, you kind of figured out what he was doing and you were keeping up with him. Mm -hmm. um, and then the last game there, um, you know, it looked like he, he ended up taking the, uh, well, actually, you won two games. And then uh, in that last game, he was able to, to, I think, win the last one, seven to, what was it, seven to five? Yeah. I think in the last game. Mm -hmm. um, 
Well, so anyways, what are, what are your thoughts, uh, you know, in that set? Like what, from your perspective, what took place? Well, to be honest with you, I was starting to get a little sweaty and winded. So I was like, well, at this point, I really do need to just stick with what I know for sure. Bread and butter. Know what I, just stick with what I can rely on. Don't mix it up because that always messes me up in challenge measures. So I was like, even if I don't necessarily win and I'm too predictable, I'll still do better doing that than trying to mix it up too much. It's going to mess me up at this point. So I was like, we'll just see how many points I can get this, my traditional method. And that's pretty much it. That's what I stuck okay, with. Okay. Yeah. 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 And again, you know, whenever, whenever I'm, you know, trying to help guys, I, I definitely want you guys to, to do and play within your comfort zone, you know? Yeah. Uh, and if it's, you know, sometimes a match isn't, isn't the time to try new things. Yeah. Uh, I get that a hundred percent. So, you know, whatever it's going to take for you to put your um, best foot forward, you know, and, and, and uh, you know, take spec in this last set. That's what you need to do here. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. um, yeah, definitely. Spec, what, what about you? What are you thinking here? <laughs> uh, that was that was a big difference uh, between that third set and the first set. Uh, oh, sorry, the second set and the, and the first set. At the, um, at a pull on your technique. <laughs> Seems to be working pretty good. Yeah, I, I, you know, to me it looked like you were um, in a much better control of your offense. You know, you didn't kind of overdo things. Um, and I think with that new mallet, it, it helped you a lot. Um, <laughs> Sam was trying to say, you know, go back to my old mallet. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. So, you, you know, I think uh, maybe hearing that from Sam, uh, you know, sparked a little fire under you. I don't know. But, uh, I don't know. Um, you know. That, that, this, uh, this set I just won, um, I, I was learning a new technique at the arcade for a while and I was kind of getting ready for it for the, this game right here, for specifically for Scott. It's, <laughs> it's my um, super soft tap uh, game. I just bring it up to the center and tap it three times just to the left and then strike it. It's sort of, you know, really, it really gets to Scott. <laughs> <laughs> it's that little corridor, man. <laughs> Well, at least yeah. in spec, I always know it's going to be one of three different shots, like 90% of the time. So it's like, it's like it's just a matter of actually blocking those three shots. <laughs> it's going to be one of those three most of the time. Yeah, so, yeah, so I, I think, spec, you should you should continue to, you know, attack, obviously. Um, you know, you, you want to, you know, where Scott knows, and he, he knows this, I'm not, you know, saying anything that, that nobody knows. But, I mean, his discipline really struggles against those traits, and he knows that. So, you know, I think you got to keep doing your best to take advantage of that. Uh, but you got to mix it up. He started doing better towards the end, you know, in that set uh, of, of yeah, being he out there a little bit more. more accurate with the overs. Yeah. And yeah. Oh, yeah. He's, he's hitting some beautiful, really good, perfect overs. And, and the way you're defending them, they almost have to be perfect mm -hmm. um, for them to go in. So, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think you need to change anything there just because, you know what, if somebody hits a perfect shot and it goes in, you know, power to them, you know, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, if that's you're why taking like away, kind of yeah, if you're taking <laughs> away care. the other, the other shots that, you know, there's a greater majority of those other shots that are hit that don't have that absolute perfect, um, precision, uh, then you're, 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 you're doing the right thing. It's a game of percentages, right? So, um, yeah, man, I, I you know, I think you just got to continue uh, playing at this pace you're playing. Uh, I, I think it looks good on you, uh, to be quite honest. And a lot of guys, had, you know, I think both Sam and, 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 you know, before Sam got off and Matt agree, you know, um, it, it looks like you've kind of uh, turned a little corner, especially those first three games. I mean, those are very dominant games. Um, yeah, he didn't you know, quite now, adjust to my new technique. <laughs> and that's kind of... That's what brought him down to those three games. <laughs> and then he adjusted, yeah. and then I just kind of like had to hope for the best. Yeah. Yeah, so obviously going down to this last game, you know, I mean, who's going to adjust or who, you know, is going to make the correct adjustment? Is there is there a correct adjustment that needs to be made, right? So, you know, you can also outthink yourself and, and overthink it and, and over-adjust when it's not necessary. Um, you know, so this is where the, the fun comes in, right? The chess match. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and this is why air hockey is such a beautiful deal, right? It's a beautiful sport. Um, you know, you can overthink things and, and be your own worst enemy. 
Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but uh, look, I, I think uh, uh, I'm, I'm. I know I'm. I'm looking forward to this last set because uh, no, no telling what the heck's gonna happen. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So we'll see if uh, Scott can kind of uh, change things around, and we'll see if you can keep up the momentum because uh, you definitely took it. Um, you know, but I, I I do like the way I saw Scott kind of respond. You know after being down 3-0 i was just saying you know a lot of players you know might pack it in and say you know what i'm gonna see what i can do in this final set you know and just give up this set but uh scott did not do that so credit to him uh he wanted to fight it out and uh you know what one or two points here and there man y'all might be still playing game seven um we'll see about so that. yeah so, you know i don't think either one of you guys can take uh, each other grant for granted at this point. I mean, I think y'all just need to leave it on the table and uh, see what happens. Sounds good. Thanks, brother. Yeah. No problem. All right. So, uh, any questions or anything like that, guys? Because I know y'all, y'all have a y'all have a little bit of time. Y'all looks like y'all have like two minutes. Well, you got any questions, back? Um, I don't know. It's kind of like. I think I'm overthinking my defense a little bit too much, like when the charge, but I think strategy just stop charging. <laughs> yeah. It, look, um, I, I, I'm definitely not telling you to charge. Uh, that's that's not something I, I really ever want to tell anybody. Uh, a well-timed charge is a very good thing at times, but for the most part, it gets you in trouble. Um, you know, but uh, uh, when, you were, when you were defending Scott, a lot of times you reminded me of, of my good friend Syed Rahman. Uh, but, you know, there's a reason we I call him Sai. Uh, I call him Sai because he, we took the D out of his name because he doesn't have defense. Oh, man. So that's the reason he charges. Um, like I said, I, I love him to death. He, he, he was in my wedding and I was in his. So we, that's, how, that's what kind of brothers we are. Mm. And... Um, you know, but uh, he'll be the first to tell you uh, not to watch him, you know, when he's playing defense. But, uh, you know, but but what he does really, really well is he charges lanes and he's really good at when he makes that charge, he charges it and stuffs it back in your goal. He's one of the better chargers that the sport's ever seen. Uh, he's not obviously what he once was um you oh, know yeah. we're all kind of up there now mm-hmm. uh and and Cy, right. y'all y'all know who Cy is he's a he's a really big man yeah i've seen that um, in the world <laughs> yeah he's, he's yeah really so he, he doesn't move around quite like he wants to and mm-hmm. he'll he'll be the first to admit that but uh, but like i said the way you were kind of charging scott's attack reminded me of what Cy does and and you have to be really cautious with that because that can get turned on you in a heartbeat. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so anyways, like I said, uh, don't overthink things. You know, you guys go out there and leave your heart on the table and play strong. Uh, you know, I know everybody's looking forward to that. Sounds good, man. Yep. Thanks, Weather, for being here. I have read your messages and I much appreciate it. All right. Sounds good. Awesome. All right. So the guy's about to get on. This is going to be uh, the third and final set of this map uh, between Peter Kai, Speck, and Scott Arnold. And um, yeah, Pete uh, or Speck is, uh, I guess, um, oh, it looks like on this set it says Matt on there. So maybe that's a mistype on the uh, screen. Matt was uh, Speck's last opponent, and um, I think with the win that Speck had over Matt, he actually moved up to number two uh, in the rating there. Uh, so I believe it's, uh, it's you know Speck at number two and Scott at number eight. So um, so anyways, they're not right there behind the computer to really kind of confirm or deny. But, uh, but like I said, this is going to be the third set now between uh, Speck and and uh, and Scott. Third and final set.
So uh, let's see. I'm not sure how many. I can't see how many uh, people are actually watching live or anything. But uh, if there are any predictions, you guys can share your predictions online. And we got uh, Nathan cleaning the table. They Good did. job for the number one player in Idaho. Yep, and he's getting into it. You notice there. Ah, oh, sorry, Danny, for leaving you, leaving you by your own some. I know. I was getting lonely. I, I was getting lonely. apologize, man. Hey, Matt, Sir. if you look on the screen, it shows your name on there that you're you're playing Pete uh, or you're playing Spec. I don't know if you know how to change that what? or. Which screen? The spec need to come change it on the scoring oh, oh, screen. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah. Nathan has way too much energy. <laughs> yeah. We've talked to him spec about that. It's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> okay, there you go. And I guess spec is he moved up to, to two, right? To yeah. second. Okay. All right. Wait, why is not working? Oh crap. Not 82. I wish we had that many people. Um, well, I guess. All right, here we go. Face off. For the final set of the evening. Oh, and Scott scores. Right while under on the faceoff. One to zero. Scott. <clears throat> Did we get a lot of good advice during the break? You know, um, I think so, but uh, I think Scott didn't really, you know, it seemed like he didn't want much because I guess he feels like he doesn't want to do things right now. Like, kind of just you know, honored that and uh, didn't really, I didn't want to mess him up. So I uh, kind of let him do his thing. And then I just talked respect for a little bit. And that was that. But, uh, you know, I, I think overall spec, um, you know, has the, the formula. Uh, it's just a matter of him implementing it. Um, I wonder if he that, that thought, was, uh, thought of it as an, like an honor thing. I don't know, but he has really big on honorable combat. Uh, so, I'm sorry. You said uh, Scott's like that, or yeah, Scott? Scott. He's oh, okay. So I don't know if he thought he was getting an unfair advantage or something that he wanted it to be a clean, clean fight, or I don't know what goes through his mind from sometimes. What, yeah, from what he described, he just felt that um, when he's overthinking it, he's not as effective. So he just uh, said, you know, either way, he's just gonna live with it and uh just you know which i get it you know like i said it, it not the best time to, to change everything you know as, as sure. the spur of the moment and, and some players can do that more so than others you know and it's typically the the players that are more experienced and have kind of been doing it longer that are able to uh, change things up uh, more effectively and easier um so i, I understand that you know i mean scott's only been playing I mean, not even a full year yet, so uh, I could see how that would just be a little too much, you know. But right now, he's off to a good start, so maybe the no advice was great advice. <laughs> or maybe he's just focusing on what you, you've already said to him. Maybe so. Who knows? Who knows? Well, that was uh, great. Yeah, good little hustle there by Scott. That was uh, it was it was bad on Specs' part. He he had a little lack of focus there. All right, so four to two. Let's see if uh, Spec can. Yeah, he's hitting in the middle of the goal a lot. So I want to see if he can uh, get that fixed. Yeah, that skips oh, some frames. Nice touch too. Yeah. Benefit of having that super mallet. Oh, that was lucky. Well, I guess, lucky bounce. Uh, 
Crystal was asking is the is that puck weighted more? The so, puck? Uh, I'd have to. Yeah, she's asking if the puck is weighted more, or maybe she's talking about the mallet. Specs mallet weighs more than Scott's mallet. Yes, probably by a couple ounces. Yeah. However, it's still within the the specifications that the USAA allows. Yeah. Uh, according to. Y'all's last weigh-in, correct? Yeah, Spec just had a weigh-in. It was just under six. Yeah. And I think the one that Scott has is a little bit over four. Yeah. Nice little crawl straight there. Mm. Almost uh, made him pay there, but and five to four. If you guys are thinking I'm keeping track of all these crosses, I'm not. <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, make spec go back and uh, rewatch it. That, yeah, that's a lot of work. You know, to to go back and to yeah to do all that. This is a huge point right here. First game of the set. Five to four, Scott. Oh, rush that. Oh, that's a good. That was a and they're good going song. under, right wall under. Six to four now. A little off goal. So I'm seeing, you know, lots of like pump fakes, um, you know, from from spec here. He got that one to go in. So six to five. <laughs> so. I'll say this, you know, out there to, to a lot of people. So, and, and this is a huge, again, huge point for Scott if he can get this to go in. Um, and he does. There it is. Seven to five, game one, Scott. Final shot brought to you by Ruthless Real Estate. Yeah, so I'll say this, like um, pump fakes. So you, you, when, you're, when you're thinking about pump fakes, think about quality pump fakes. Um, you know, just to move your, your mallet kind of towards the puck a little bit uh, isn't always the most ideal thing if it's not if it doesn't look like it's Change actually going to be a shot if you're just kind of making pump fakes but you're not even near the mallet or near the puck with your mallet you're really just wasting energy um, you know so so again uh, uh, pump fakes they need to look like they're actually going to be a shot uh, otherwise, they're not going to be nearly as effective as what you, you know, as the intent. Um, and you can overdo it too, I think. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I've done, I've overdone it, it before. Yeah, yeah. If you over, if you overdo the pump fakes, um, I think it takes away from, again, what your offense is really trying to do. But if it's used, you know, seldomly or or, or in a timely manner, they become extremely effective. So, uh, great, great uh, players to watch, you know, with pump fakes. Uh, you know, Vince Salceda, of course. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I know Dan Myers. So, you know, him and his, his love pumps. <laughs> the love pump. So, love watching him play. Oh, and I, I forget, you know, Joey Liss, actually, out of North Carolina. He's He's gotten really good at it as well. He, uh, he was right. asked to be on this uh, broadcast today as well, but he had other things to do. Didn't oh. you, Joey? Yeah, he he probably heard I was going to be on here and said, man, I don't want to get on there with that guy. He, Maybe. He doesn't, uh, he doesn't love cats like I do or something like that, you know. <laughs> something. All right, let's see here. Oh, I almost went in. Oh. Yeah, but another face-off one. By, Scott. So by those Scott. are two face-off wins so far this set. I feel like that his his gameplay right this second is dangerous to himself. He looks a little out of control, but you know it, it's working in his favor. At least it did the first game. So um, we'll see if that holds true. Hmm. It may be because he's trying to shoot outside of corridors he's normally used to shooting in. 
Well, you know, I, I'd say yes, that, but but I don't think so now. I mean, I you know, I think he. No, yeah. It was clear that, you know, he he doesn't want to do things that he's not you know used to doing, you know, because it's just not the time for him, you know, to do that. That's yeah. fine. Uh, Yeah, like I said, everybody has their little quirks, you know, about their game and whatnot. Uh, no, that, that's no exception. Strong. Good release. Rival. I spec. He held that just enough. It wasn't the most accurate shot. It was like in the middle, but um, again, if you hit it with the right release, it does not have to be super accurate. You freeze the defense just enough to get by them. You open that whole lane. Yes, exactly. That's good block by yeah, Scott. Yeah, good block, but but Spec also rushed it. He's got to take that time, just like he, you know, held that release for for that under. He's got to do the same for the straights. Mm. Definitely rushed there. Yeah, definitely rushed. Yeah. Right now, it looks like Scott's, you know. Doing a better job of, of taking his time with each, with each possession. Uh, you know, and that one got, kind of got away from a little bit the drift. But oh, I'd yeah. say, you know, he's, he's, he's got to, you know, for Scott, you know, for him to, to get kind of like to the next level, there, it's still too much where the, you know, the drift is dictating what shot he's going to hit. Right. You know? Yeah. So it's, it's just floating there, you know. It's going to the right quadrant. So he's hitting something right there, you know, instead of like, I'm going to move it where I want to move it like that. That was better. But you got to move it where you want to put it and then make a shot from it. It just adds to predictability if you no, absolutely. Yeah. don't deviate yeah, from that. You know, I mean, when you're going against, you know, a better defender, then it becomes even more obvious. Um, you know, when you, when you make those kind of mistakes. But uh, good shot there. He's up two, two to one. I wonder what, what's going on with Spec. I, I wonder if he's just fatigued from doing a challenge match and then finishing off this challenge match. Yeah, I, I don't think that helped him. Um, oh, he got away with the charge there that was a bad charge. Um, yeah, I don't think that necessarily helped him. I, I, I do think he kind of underestimated Scott a little bit too, um, as he ties it two to two. Um, you know, Speck obviously is capable uh, of, of beating Scott as he's done it, um, in the last set. But, um, yeah, you know, it's, it's, you, you got to respect your opponent. You have to, um, be, be humble about things, you know, and, uh, don't don't think that they're gonna just you know because I'm the higher ranked player that they're just gonna fold to get on the table with you. And I don't necessarily think that Ooh. that is what Speck was thinking, but I mean, but I do could, think he, he may have underestimated, <laughs> underestimated him just a little bit. He talks a very high game. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. That was a good little hustle kind of cross straight there. All right. Three to three. That was a good over. Nice left wall over from the lefty. Mm, that got away from him. I think Scott is one of my favorite people to have a game against yeah just his style is so different so 
so just when I'm looking at the the pump fakes here, you know, it's it's like a rhythm thing. Um, really from both players, you know, mm -hmm. one, two, one, two. And, and it's, I don't, I don't necessarily think that's helping either player, uh, score. I think it's when the, the release is held and it's a delayed release. That's more effective for both of them, um, versus the, 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 the pump fakes. I, I don't know if it's right, but I look for like a a twitch or some type of reaction to my motion and then I commit. Mm -hmm. If I don't see a reaction, then I follow through. Yeah, so I, I think when you're on offense, right? So you're talking about when you're on offense, right? right so right. you don't see them flinch or anything like that. I so so the right way to play defense is, is you know, in my opinion, is to not pay attention to that release. You're just paying attention to the puck, you know? So I'm purely looking at the puck in the position of where the puck is at. And, and if I'm doing that, I'm not going to be fooled by pump fakes or anything else, really. It's just a matter of can I react fast enough and quick enough. Right. You know, that's a big point right there. 6-4 this game. Game oh, points. 6-5. Oh yeah. Ooh, Scott with those two right defensive under. motions, I think, put him out of position to to defend properly right there. Yeah. Yeah, he the way he's playing defense there, Scott, I mean, I don't know if Spec should do anything different, you know, besides just bringing it up there and having a few, you know, pump fakes or uh, you know, delayed releases, um, and just keep attacking like that. Um you know, you, you've got to, you know, again, just have more discipline, I think, you know, defensively. Gosh, it feels so um, weird talking about spec like that. And he's just like two feet away from me. <laughs> well, like I said, he, uh, he did a good job there on that last point. Um, yeah, I guess he was. So okay. now it's, it is seven to five, uh, spec, seven tighten to five. Headband. So, <laughs> so it's one to one. So now this becomes a best of five set. So, um, yeah, uh, it's still anybody's match. Um, yeah, spec needs one. I don't one. know what's gonna. No, no, yeah. mind. No, no, no. I was looking at the wrong screen. Spec needs three. Scott needs three. Yeah, they, yeah, they both need three. Yeah, both need three. Um, yeah, so it's it's best of five. Um, you know, at this point, uh, we, we've accomplished nothing. Uh, they're, they're tied. <laughs> no spasmatic pump action. No spasmatic pump action. It's probably good advice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Breathing right. is also That's good advice. Good, good for both of them, absolutely. You know, I, uh, you know, when I'm talking to you know, the, the, especially the younger players, um, you want to be intense, but it's a controlled intensity, uh, you know, when you're playing. It's, um, if you lose, like, that control, then that's when, like, a lot of bad habits take place. You know, you start um, rushing everything. You, you're not thinking defensively. You're not really ready. You're not set. Um, you might be super fast and super quick, but usually, you know, uh, when you're playing a, um, a a seasoned veteran, I mean, and you see somebody going crazy, you know, all pumped up, they come out and just hit a little off speed and it just goes right in. It just upsets the the other player, you know, because because you actually hurt yourself. And um, you know, so it has to be a controlled intensity, uh, you know, when you're playing. And um, so yeah, that's that's definitely good advice. Yeah. Excuse me, Danny. Nubs, you shut your dirty mouth. <laughs> All right, we're yeah, back. Yeah, you, you needed to respond there. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's see here. So here we go. Game three. Oh, the mallet. Crystal, the mallet. The mallet cost, what, 350 bucks? Yeah. 
You have. Don't don't sell yourself short. You beat me before. It's happened. I think I even went home crying one night. You beat me so bad. All right, here we go. Right. Game three. Scott, uh, Scott won the first two face-offs. Let's see how he does. Huh. Hey, won the third. Speck just gave it to him. And slams it in for first blood. Good block. Nice over. Right. Right ball over. Is this two to zero? Both competitors with such determination on their face. Another over for Scott. Scott oh. is here to play. 3 0. Yep. There's it's cross straight. 3 to 1. Once again, I'm not taking keeping track of those uh, crosses, so that's another cross. If someone wants to mark that. I had a button, but Spec took it away. Another cross, three to two. Now Spec's just trying to pad his score. So it was like three charges in a row. Huh. I think Spec, Spec touched it. Yeah. yeah. And another over from Scott. Yeah. Seems to be working. Looks like uh, Spec has picked and up another a over. piece of a shot, but ooh, man. Oh, I missed that one. Five to three. Like a little one two action there from Spec. I think those are my favorite. Oh, girl. Oh, charge. Five to four. Another charge. Good possession. Spec, uh, going back to that charging kind of attack that he was using earlier, he's kind of gone away from it. He got lucky there, though. Oof. Game point, Scott. Uh, oh. Oh no. He's going for a love pump and it just pumped away from him. Yeah. Got lucky again. Yeah. Scott was off on his bank Across. and I think uh, Spec made the best of that. Good block. That was a big block right there. Yeah. Oh, but then oh, turns around and just wow, stuffs it right back picks. into him. Whew. Oh my gosh, he almost did it again. Oh man. Spec is not going down without a fight. There it is. Oh, got the cross. Yep. So huge, huge point there. Um, you know, and. <clears throat> He's over there in that far right quadrant. It was very important. He didn't. He didn't bank it from there. Uh, I think that's you know, what Spec was waiting for. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. Uh, but you know, he it was, if you notice, he was left-handed, right? So he was using his left Danny, when he hit that mallet, cross. <laughs> what? Like, Danny, if you want this mallet, let me know. <laughs> Are you just giving it away? Is it cursed now? No. You see what I did? You see those charges? I saw I saw that loss. Oh yeah. Posted up the big L. <laughs> you want me to get Sam and then you get Sam? I want to get Sam too. Sam went to sleep. Oh, yeah, he has to work in the morning. Oh. So he said. I can uh, get uh, maybe just that. Cool, I'll finish it out. Hopefully there's only two. two. <laughs> Good job, Nathan. Not. 
All right. So big, big win there uh, for Scott. He's up two games to one. He just needs two more games to win. Uh, whereas uh, Speck has got to win three out of the next four games. Yep. So, yeah, big, big, uh, that was a big win there. So um, we'll see what happens. Uh, I think Speck kind of found something there at that chart, all those charges. I, man, it, it seemed like uh, Scott really struggled to get by him. That is my secret to beating Scott is the charging game to yeah. anticipate his telegraphed shots and then charge when appropriate. And that seems to just totally destroy his gameplay. Mm. And then he'll try to switch to his right hand, but that's, you know, like a, a one trick pony on his right hand. So gotcha. completely yeah. predictable offense and you just have to get pa past the defense and good defense on your own part and then it's good to go i mean it's not it's not a cakewalk but um that's my cheat code for it for now until right. He, right. he changes something all right that's the first face off that spec has won so far this set oh there you go nice cross good delay release one to zero and Spec is, I think he's going to continue the charging attack on his defense. That's another point, two to zero. Another charge. I think that was an effective uh, uh, feint. Or what's it called? The pump, pump feint? Uh, yeah, yeah, the pump feint. That was effective in that instance. Wow. Yep. Yeah. You just. Cutting and crossing them up. Yeah. And, and and he's attacking. Well, he missed that one, but, uh, you know, well-timed shot by Scott. Three to one. Man, this is a replay city. <laughs> All right, let's see here. He's in the lane. He just needs to fix his tripod. Fix the turret control. Mm. He took a little off the timing there. Got spec to come out. Took advantage of the charge. Yeah, drew the charge. I mean, that if he can do that, I think he can draw the charge out a lot and then ex exploit his spec's right, total exactly. defense. Four two. Another cut straight, five to two. I think spec the difference he's found his straight shots, whereas before he wasn't confident with them, and now he's a little bit more accurate and a little bit more confident with them, and it's made the difference. Yeah, yeah. So I, I you know, this is the dangerous part for spec, right? So uh, I think like the difference here is he's kind of playing angry to some degree. You know, he's not happy with being down two games to one in this last set, right? So so there's a little bit of, like, desperation and kind of frustration. You know, he is where he is right now in this match. So he's he's, he's pushing it. And that, and that might be what he needs uh, as he just took that uh, game. So it's now two games apiece, uh, winning that game seven to three. So, uh, you know, I think that's, that's what – spec needs i think he's got to continue with that intensity um uh, you know i think the second he lets up that's, that's as, when scott that's kind of gets back get. into the swing of things so like i said we'll we'll see how it plays out but uh you know this this can be another well two two games max right i'm sorry uh no three games max um so it's best of three at this point Two games apiece right now in the in the third and final set of this match. Yep. Now, I mean, you know, regardless of, of the result here, uh, Scott has definitely you know shown that he can compete with the big boys there in Idaho, and 
you know, that he's going to be a force uh, to be reckoned with from, from here on. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, definitely a pretty, pretty, pretty good day, pretty good evening for him regardless. Yeah. did some kind of magic thing in here i have no idea what it was okay yeah so uh again it, this is going to come down to you know who wants it more right so uh spec has got to keep pushing those straights um force scott to to you know sell out for for him defensively one way or the other you know and i think scott's got to figure out how to take advantage of those charges from from spec because i don't think that's going to change i think spec realizes that's part of his formula and i think he realizes that he's going to continue to do that all right can, face off can scott adjust yep. one by spec so last two face offs now one by spec mm. Ooh, man hard right wall Start off one to zero. And immediately Spec is charging. So he's he's charging uh, Scott's attack. Trying for a double wall. It doesn't pan out. Trying to sell the faint. Mm -hmm. I keep calling it. It's the pump fake. Good right wall under. Answer by a cut straight from spec. Blistering right wall under by spec to take a commanding 3-1 lead. That's his best shot, I think, is the right wall under. He hit it very well that time, that's for sure. More kind of like a, you know, slower, kind of methodical. Oh, nice. Got him before he wasn't set. 4-1. Another right wall over by Scott. Yeah, we're going to have to, if, 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 if this holds true and Speck ends up winning this, this match, we're going to have to probably ask him why he didn't uh, stick with this charging defense the whole time. <laughs> So, because that's been very effective against Scott here. Scott's got to figure out how to overcome it. All right, let's see. Trying for the over again. Yeah. I think Spec's in a position, good position to block that over now. Yeah. He's leaving his uh, left side open now. So he's conceded the left side. The, would that be the cross side? In the hopes that he won't get stuck with that over. Yeah, he, he's basically playing the percentages. I mean, as to. Yeah, what see, he Scott's just blocked that over again. Yeah. Blocked again. Yep. So he just took away a big portion of Scott's offense there, blocking that over and the left wall under. Go straight. Five to two. Now 
it looks like Scott is, you know, attempting to. Oh, he still got it in. Under, yeah. And then, I think he was attempting to go kind of like a power straight from, from there, but ended up kind of going over there. Blocked over attempt. Ooh, that was a good defense against an own goal. A forehand action there from, uh, you know, we haven't seen that from Spec in a while. Yeah, spec can be very dangerous with that forehand. It's very sudden and very like it pops. Yeah. So so I like a little bit of, of that, you know, just to mix things up, keep it fresh, but at the same time, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you, you need to stick with what's working. Bummer. A little rush from Scott. He doesn't need to rush at this point. He needs to just focus, set it up, and aim the shot. Nope. Flood. Got away from him. I'm trying to go for a left wall over. Yeah. Boom. Yep, cut straight. Six to three, spec. Spec just seems to be blocking everything. It's got to be demoralizing for Scott. And then Scott scores oh, on himself. Goodness. Yeah. Scott. Oh, what a bummer. Well, we got possible match game now uh, in Spec's favor. Um, you know, it, it's it's probably taking Spec. Uh, an extra set to get here than what he wanted. Um, but, uh, you know, Scott has been putting up a heck of a fight. He has. Yeah. So we'll see what happens because uh, this is not written in the books just yet. Uh, you know, Scott um, uh, is making him work for it. That's for dang sure. Um, you know, uh, constant uh, defense, defense, defense. I'm seeing, you know, back, which is a good thing. Um, he's got to keep up that intensity and uh, keep up that focus and hopefully close uh, out this match because, you know, you don't want to do that forever. I, I see that uh, Crystal is on here and she's even saying, you know, don't pull back <laughs> too quick. And she's right. You know, you don't, don't want to pull back. You got to stay out there. So that's good that uh, she is, is seeing that as well. And, Crystal's uh, paying attention. Yeah, yeah. That's good stuff. I love the support uh, she's given. So that's awesome. Yeah, it's just uh, simple geometry of staying out there and taking away those angles. Um, you know, but uh, I'll, I'll say he's, he's got to... You know, offensively, he's got to be a little more patient. You know, all those releases just a little bit to to help freeze what Spec has been doing. That was Spec, ladies and gentlemen, doing his yeah. magic stuff. Okay potential match game for spec uh, scott is going to try to push this to uh a game seven if he wins uh to make it a game seven match match game either way so we'll see if uh, scott can do that another face-off win by spec that's three in a row um scott won the first three and this sixth one spec one there's that charge again 
It was definitely intense. Oh, cross. Cross straight. Ooh. Yep, another charge. She saved, almost went in. Too much, uh, too much bounce from that mallet. A little bit of a delayed release there to help him with uh, get that cut in. Just that little bit will help freeze your opponent. Mm. Well, he's lucky to have got that one back. Mm. Looks like something's a little off there when Spec hit that last uh, bank. I don't know if he miss hit it or what. Both players showing some, you know, little fatigue as uh, Spec pounds that one in. So now two to one. Oh goodness! Another unforced error. It's very. Yeah. Very interesting. Right wall under. I wonder if his Spec left. is losing a little, little bit of his fine, fine uh, control. That was letting him wield that mallet. Or maybe all of a sudden he's not worthy. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you think Odin's taking it away? <laughs> maybe. I don't know. We'll see on the outcome of the game. All right, let's see here. Lefty cross, yeah. Three to two, Scott. Ooh, everywhere but inside the goal. Yeah. But yep. Makes Thanks it straight. up for that. Three to three. If Scott can push this to game seven, anything can happen for sure. There's like a nice cross there. Man. You know, I think... To me, Specs look, I'm a little fatigued here. You know, second match of the evening, it might be getting to him. Mentally, physically. Oh, I mean, Specs in the gym yeah. every day, so he's not any stranger to physical fitness. But I mean, physically wearing yeah, you down is, is physical. Physically wearing you down. Absolutely, yes. And then, as you stated, I mean, just the whole mental, you know, part of it. Oh, no. Oh, enforced error, self-score by Scott. That was huge. Evens it Oof. up. Yeah, four to four. Almost happens again, almost identically, the very next hit. Mm. Spec almost had that, but... Uh... Oh, goodness. Just a little, little touch at the very end gave it gave him the the angle he needed. Yep. Good blocks so from Scott. Left knee, crawl straight. All right, let's see if Spec can answer here. He's down five four. And he does. He does five five. This is huge. Okay. Scott needs a big defense. Ooh. Oh my goodness! That's what Charge did for match point five. 
the blink of an eye. Another charge ends it up ends up with the possession. Oh my goodness! Good, Good release, bad Best position. Bet. He needs big defense here. Oh, oh my goodness! So intense. And Spec oh scores on himself. So match self match point, game point. And it's going to be match, match point. Wow. That was a very nice right wander by Spec there to take the match. Oh, and it doesn't into... even play the replay. What the flip? Oh, no. Too bad. That's all right. So Spec wins it. He gets all the points. Um, Scott loses a bit of the rating, but comes out okay he played a really good game and we'll get these guys in here so we can have a little chat overall good yeah. game for everybody that was a great showing by scott great showing by spec yeah yeah heck of a last uh set um you know both players had their ups and downs uh no doubt yep and then uh i just want to see how many points spec gets because that's uh, cool probably nothing <laughs> What's up, Daddy? I'm so tired. I'm so sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't tell at all, Spec. <laughs> yeah, I, I think you uh, you definitely wore yourself out today. Um, yeah, I mean, I've had like oh, wait, 16 games today. Oh, yeah. Heck of the last set. Uh, heck of a match. Um, yeah, I, I did my signature know. move. Did you see it on my last point? <laughs> No, yeah, I, I think I think both you guys played really well at times, uh, phenomenal at times, and you know, just uh, it ended up uh, coming down to that six-six battle, and uh, you know, I couldn't believe that. You know, I think both you guys had a self-score, you know, to give the other <laughs> oh, game <man>. point. <laughs> Yep. So I wasn't sure what the heck was going to happen there, and uh, you know, you, you you ended up hitting uh, a really a ridiculous right wall under uh, to take it. So uh, congratulations, Spec um, Scott. Great match, man. Well played. Thanks, man. Uh, I think you, you you know you you've let the Idaho guys know you're you're not going anywhere. You're right. Uh, you're right there in the mix. <laughs> so uh, good job, and um, you know I. I you know, hats off both of you guys. Thank you, man. Appreciate so, it. Yeah. So, uh, Scott, what what are your we'll, we'll ask spec here in a second? But first, Scott, if you know, you know, this match here, that last set, you know, what yeah. were you kind of going into those last few games? You know, what was your mindset? Well, the um, last few games, my mindset was okay. I've got to oversimplify my game. Uh, I got to eliminate all the stuff that I'm not very confident in. So. When I noticed something was working, I was like, all right, I'm going to keep drilling that until it stops working, and that's going to be what it is. I was like, this probably will mess me up score-wise, but it's going to be less than if I start trying to fiddle around with stuff. So I just had to make a decision and stick with it and see what the results would be. And uh, the very last game, I switched back to just my very old traditional style. I brought my defense back a little bit more. I focused on those three shots, the cross, cut, and... Uh, I really should have thrown diagonals in there, but that's pretty much what I did. I just went back to my oldest version of the game, what I could really rely on, what I felt comfortable with, and that's what my strategy was. So I was like, 50-50 chance of it working. That's kind of what my mindset was, but for whatever reason, I didn't feel like the other stuff was worth um, trying to fiddle around with anymore. I just wanted to you know, make a choice and go with it, basically. Yeah, yeah, no, that's good. And, and you know, and look, I mean, as you get more experience, you know, you get more, uh, you know, matches and games under your belt, mm -hmm. um, you know, you'll be able to make different changes, you know, within a game a lot easier, more, um, you know, any, any, any time you need to adapt, um, yeah. it, it's, it'll just be more natural than anything else. So, right. you know, it, it's not unusual that, especially, I mean, you haven't been playing a year, so, you know, uh, you can't expect that somebody like yourself, you know, just, you know, not even a year's worth of experience is going to be able to just totally change up your game and, and all of a sudden just be just as effective, if not more effective. I mean, that's just not right. realistic, but, exactly. but, um, you know, you did great, man. Uh,
you know, spec. I think you pushed him about as well as anybody could. I mean, <laughs> Definitely. You know, he uh, sure. <laughs> he was he was playing good. There were times that uh, those those straight shots were just, you know, on the money. You know, from spec. Um, you know, and from, you know, for for you, you know, Scott, where you need to, you know, kind of grow again, just defensively, right? Getting that discipline a little more so, and, yeah. and being more stubborn. Right, make it that much more difficult on your opponent to score. You know, at, at uh, on a consistent level. Um, you know, but outside of that, I mean, you know, just you know, obviously, you know, to you know, try to evolve your offense a little bit as well, where you're not as predictable and whatnot. You know, that, I think that's like when you look at the you know, you're up two games to one, those two games in a row where Spec, you know, beat you seven three seven three. A lot of that was he just kind of brought back that charging kind of attack, you know, to attack your defense, your offense rather. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it threw you off just enough, um, you know, where where it, it was really the difference in the match yep. in all reality. So, uh, you know, nothing to, to panic or stress about. I think it's just uh, you, you learn from it and uh, you, you figure out how to overcome that in the future. Cool, man. I have to show him what the new Malik could do. <laughs> oh, there you go. It's fun yeah. to play against for sure. So, yeah. So Spec, I mean, um, you know, what what were your thoughts? You know, I mean, you were down two one, and oh, yeah. um, you know, it, it's it's almost like you got on the table. You were kind of playing mad. You know, uh, the shots were were more authoritative. I guess is probably the way to put it. You were hitting them crisper. Um, you know, uh, what are your thoughts? Well, I have this thing where, so I get mad more and more times I, I get defeated. So to, and I sort of taught myself how to learn to control that through the gym, you know, I can like control the rage as you could, as you could uh, mm. tell and <clears throat> controlling all that rage into one single shot. Just putting all my hatred into that one shot, and just just trying to do it as perfect as possible, you know. And that's sort of my mindset when I do like a um, new PR, for example. I just get all of my inner hatred just to do this perfect, like that weight perfectly and execute it properly, so I don't fail. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, bottle it up, man, because uh, <laughs> you, you did pretty good there. So, I mean, you know, you were down 2-1. Uh, Scott was giving you everything you can handle. And then, you know, like I said, you, you won two games in a row, 7-3, to three, at a real key pivotal moment. I mean, that puts you up three games to two. Um, and this last game, it really could have went either way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, but uh, it, it worked out for you in the end. Um, I really thought it was going to go game seven. I was kind of hoping for a game seven. Um, <laughs> it might have, you, you know, know, if he hit it over. <laughs> if, they hit, if Scott yeah, hit it over, it, it would have like been game seven. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, it was close. It was close. But uh, anyways, guys, uh, great job. Uh, you know, y'all keep it going. Y'all keep up the momentum. Uh, you know, keep pushing each other to, to achieve new heights. Um you know, just, I mean, one of you guys has got to start beating up on Nathan up there. You know? but he's, he's starting to be the Colin of Idaho. And, uh, you well, know. we've got a long ways to go. <laughs> he, he's like number 20. Yeah. I'm like number 70. <laughs> so. If only we could play him with a green puck. I play so much better with green pucks. Uh, green pucks are not uh, legal. <laughs> yeah. I know. That's what I'm saying. If only we could, though. Well, we could it, it was St. Patty's Day this last weekend. Yeah. So maybe, maybe you should have try to get the match on that day and then there's you know, I guarantee you, you know Phil Arnold would probably make that exception yeah uh, being a, a an Irishman uh, he would, there you he, go he would have no problem doing that uh, that's funny but, you guys uh, should find anyway. new, uh, new material to make pucks out of you know Lexan is kind of a dying material it's a good idea probably huh yeah yeah uh, it'd be it you know again we, we definitely need to kind of open our horizons and, and look for whatever material we can find these days. And, um, you know, I think that uh, it'll help secure the longevity of the sport if we can do that. So yeah. I don't think, uh, you know, anyone will be opposed to trying that out and to, 
uh, you know, seeing where, I guess, the, the plastics can take us, I guess, right? Yeah, I mean, the, the so, plastics you guys still use have been around for almost 40 years or 30, 40 years, you know? Like all the green, yeah, the colored yeah. malice, the cream malice, those, <laughs> those have been long been in the air hockey for like, like <laughs> more than us you know, combined, our ages combined. Yeah, the, the original um, pro style mallet was the plastic that was used was the same uh, plastic that was used on ballistic warheads uh, <laughs> back in the 60s and 70s. Jeez. So something happened in the 80s where they basically limited the amount of that that was available. Uh, so all of a sudden those mallets started to become rare and uh, if you didn't already have some, you weren't going to be able to get it. So uh, there's there's not too many of those mounts any longer that exist. Um, you know, some players have them. Uh, you know, uh, some players don't. But uh, uh, that that's really my favorite. Um, um, I, I uh, you know I miss being able to play with that. Mm -hmm. but, uh, well, you know, it is what it is. It, it, it's sort of time to find new material, and that's why I'm coming in. Sure. And I found a new yeah. material for me. <laughs> and I love playing with it. Awesome. You know, it's it's so fun playing with that mouth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and ultimately, yeah, guys. I mean, uh, you know, you want to do what works, you know, for yourself, and uh, obviously, you'll still be within the parameters the sport's defined, and and you know, even even if the parameters need to change a little bit. Uh, to keep the sport going ultimately uh then that that's what will have to happen but uh you know like i said it, everything's you know baby steps in in that regard just because you, you don't want to change the game too much where you know all of a sudden uh you know the the, the puck and the mallet are doing the job for you you know right. and some along those lines you know i mean there's it's it's it goes back to like integrity of the sport or whatever else but but i don't I don't see it changing too much. I mean, uh, you may get a little more pop off the puck or, or mallet, but uh, uh, for the most part, it's still the same game. So, um, yeah, it's going to be, uh, it'll be exciting to see uh, if you can make a puck and and see if, uh, you know, it has better results than the current Lexan puck. I mean, I'll, I'll try. There's, there's some materials I'm looking at, maybe... There's some, uh, like, what do you look for in a puck? Like hardness or? Yeah, so something that obviously it, 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 it needs to, you know, weigh, and I don't know what the, the ounces are or whatever, but I mean, it needs to weigh enough where it's not going to fly. Uh, well, uh, at, I, I think know. the um, mustard ones are like two and a half ounces. Mm-hmm. Okay. Maybe less, so, actually, like 1.7. So it needs to have that. The other thing it needs to have is, you know, the ability to, I guess, really be sanded, right, and not warp, right? Because <laughs> um, I, I can't tell you how many pucks I've warped in my in my career, right? But and it's just playing over and over and over with this puck and, and hitting it with, you know, a lot of force over time. And... Uh, it, it ends up warping that puck and it's just never the same. It doesn't, you know, float as good on the table um, and, and whatnot. So I think the, those are the keys. So if you can have one that uh, obviously is floating on the table really well, it, it doesn't fly off the, the, you know, the rails when you, when you hit a shot um, that, you know, outside of that just needs to be round in my opinion. Right. So I think we'll, you know, I think everybody would agree with that. Sounds good. Cool. Right. I, got a, yeah. I got a rough estimate. So, Scott, you gained eight ELO points. Eight? Yep, you gained oh. points because you did so well. Interesting. That's pretty yeah. cool. useful. So, nice. our, our system is like it rewards people for playing good, right? And you just gained sure, eight yeah. points instead of losing like 50 points. Is the rank still the same after this? or? Yeah, I, I don't know. Where are you? 435? Let's see. Yeah, you're still in the way. But, you, but you, you went up eight points. Okay. Well, that's useful. Yeah. Well, awesome, awesome guys. Um, well, hey, uh, so what's what's next for both you guys? Spec, and then you said you had a bunch of matches still. 
Nope, this is the last one. Uh, oh, that was it? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. It's like 10 so o'clock here. Is Nathan next on your list? Hmm? Is Nathan, oh, Nathan next on your list? I don't know, maybe. <laughs> Okay. Uh, okay. Well, we'll see you know, y'all don't forget about Nathan there. You know, he's, he's y'all's top dog. Y'all need to challenge that <laughs> that man. Well, if I so, challenge him, he might he, he might just get another boost in points. I'll challenge him soon again too. Yeah. Make sure I play more intense. I was overly relaxed last time. I oh, think. you got you got to play Matt Bentley now. I will. I'd be challenging Matt now. He's next on the list. <laughs> then yeah, no. yeah, that was gonna be my next question. Like, what what do you have planned now, Scott? So so I've been going so down the list. I've Matt. started with Nathan, then Sam. I went all the way down to Spec, and I was like, all right, I'm gonna just challenge each guy one after the other until I be one of these guys. I gain experience along the way. So now I'm going at Matt and Noah. Kind of like that little crunch pincher at the end. It's like one of these guys. <laughs> I gotta be one of these guys. Okay. And I'll be facing Josiah as well because he had challenged me. So yeah, that'll be yeah. fun. You should challenge no yeah. uh, Nubs again. <laughs> Actually get him out here to play. <laughs> sure, yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, awesome, awesome. Well, good deal, guys. Uh, again, appreciate you know having me on here. Uh, you know, uh, great matches. Yeah, uh, sorry for uh, such a short notice, you know. <laughs> we were, like, rushing oh, out Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no worries. No worries. Yeah, thanks for uh, taking the time, man. Appreciate it. No problem. Uh, it's, uh, you How know, 2-0. and o. <laughs> <laughs> two and O is not a bad, not a bad uh, night for uh, playing two matches in a row. And I know that. Uh, yeah, he was a tougher. Know, just he was a cup tougher guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's it's not just the physical toll, you know, but the mental toll, you know, to sit there and, uh, yeah. you know, deal with, you know, attack after attack after attack, <laughs> and both guys mm, right. bringing you all sorts of different looks, you know, on the table. So you know, great job, Spec, and uh, you know, Scott, good job of, of really pushing them, you know. Thank you. Um, so again, looking forward to uh, both you guys in the future, and uh, you know, hopefully, uh, uh, you both got, both you guys are going to have a lot of success when y'all come down to uh, the Houston area for the World Championship in August. Awesome. Yeah, that'll, that'll be fun. It was so fun last year. And it's going to be yes. even better this year. <laughs> yeah. Got a new I think uh, so. new venue. I think so. It, I heard it's yeah, eight thousand square feet. That's a lot of square feet. Yeah. <laughs> yes. The, the venue is uh, super nice. Um, it's right, you know, on it's the right off the water, yeah. uh, which you know, a little little different environment than there at the college. Uh, yeah, this time has a pool. <laughs> yes, that's cool, dude. Yeah, it's, totally it's nice. more of an actual resort versus uh, you know, Student you just dorm. get charge resort fees like we did at the last. One. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. oh, <laughs> and there's no resort. <laughs> that always bothers me about a hotel. You know, they call themselves a resort, but. It, it's not it's a resort. Not really. It's just room. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but yeah, it, it's uh, a much better deal, and I think that the rooms were probably half the cost of what the rooms previously were, um, which that goes a long ways with everybody these days. So, um, you know, like I said, uh, uh, looking forward to seeing everybody there, and uh, you know, hopefully we uh, keep this thing moving, man, all in the right direction, and uh, uh, you know. Get some get get more and more uh, viewers, you know, like uh, right. like yep. your mother Crystal here. She's been awesome uh, supporting the entire evening, <laughs> uh, you know, and uh, we love seeing that because uh, you know number one, it's it's awesome to support family, but it's also just awesome supporting a passion, right? Yeah. So, so speaking uh, of Crystal, you know, this um, is... she was talking about my mallet here. It's made out of um, Delrin. It's a super hard basically a indestructible plastic and it's super it, it has at least double the weight of nylon or the good the cream mallets they're like they're basically the same size and the guy did a very very good job of machining this and it feels great in the hand it just like scott can can tell you too it, it just feels really nice in the hand that does it? feel really good i still have to try it out actually yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I think we're going to head out here and Scott's going to try out the new mallet. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good to me, man. All right. Thanks for your time, Danny. And thank you, everybody, for All watching. Right. And we'll see you in the next stream on Monday. Maybe Scott versus Matt Bentley. Or... Yeah, dude. It's either that or me and Josiah. One <laughs> oh, yeah. Other. One of those two. <laughs> All right. See you later. All right, guys. Take care. Have a good one.